distance for everything. So we can actually kind of uh, start jumping into everything. We're going to, I'm going to, I got to actually do a, no, oh, my, my screen. I'm going to do a slight rollback on something that I said, said uh, uh, last session. Okay. I said this was going, that I said L'Oreal Silverhand was the uh, Open Lord of Waterdeep. She is not. It is Dagalt Never Ember right now. Yep. Yes. So he's the one that's going to be kind of like the, the he's he's the one proceeding over everything. Not L'Oreal Silverhand. Uh, Chris, did he wanted to do some shopping? That was going to be my next next thing. <laughs> Got you covered. Shopping. Shopping. So we spent an entire episode uh, shopping and training with these other three uh, uh, knuckleheads. Uh, so <laughs> Chior, uh, you guys arrived at uh, Waterdeep, uh, set up shop uh, in the uh, the Iron Bear. They're told by Leosin that there's going to be a council that they would, um, with a bunch of members of factions here in Waterdeep uh, in two days. So you have two days which are open to do whatever you would like. I'm going for the shopping. Uh, and uh, I believe I had given you your gold well it has been written at least yeah so it should uh, be on 13,338 is what I was told yep um okay so I just start with what I want or how are we going to do this yeah so tell me what you're looking for and you can ask for help to find it Okay, so I need to get a platinum inlaid vial that's at least 400 gold pieces. Okay, this is a material component? Yes. Okay, so but let me let me start off by saying any any material components you can easily find. Okay. So you can just make sure that you find it, mark it down, knock it off your gold. Okay. I'm counting on all of you to remember what material components you have. I know that Zindralov has 5,000 gold pieces worth of diamonds <laughs> to, to, in order to raise your dead ass. So. <laughs> okay. Gloves mm. of thievery is something I want to go after. Okay, hold on. Let me pull up my magic items list. I'm coming. Plus five decks, light of hand. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm looking up. Then. All right. Okay. Um, actually, quickly, just, just roll me an investigation check. Okay. A anything that's, that's really bad, I might have you roll another one, but this will be kind of like your general investigation check for finding okay. things. And if, if you have a hard time finding stuff, you can always ask for help. Okay. Yeah, let me DM. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to this. Yeah, Diamant. Nice. I can't wait to kick her ass. Hmm. Oh, I, another page I forgot to pull up here. <laughs> mm, let's see here. Uh, 
Uh, you could easily find that for uh, 300 gold pieces. 300? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Xanathar. I'm not even looking at Xanathars. Oh. <laughs> right, I'm using the DMG in this one. Oh, no, great. Actually, Xanathars might, might have. Is that already. pulling my Christmas score into things, or? Well, this is super easy to find. So unless you're you're trying to bargain for it then then that's a different role but right now we're trying to find things i'm telling you how much that they cost okay I'll go from there i'll take it uh do i need another investigation for my next item or how nope just that? give me your next item if if you need another investigation check uh i'll i'll ask for it okay rope of climbing that should be pretty common right it's uncommon. Oh, yeah, you find that as bargain of like a hundred and fifty gold. Nice. Okay, Heward's Handy Haversack. Ah, there it is. The, yeah, I think I, I'm going to start working on that one. A haversack? Yep. I, I, I love this because, because it's yours looking for things that are relatively easy to find. <laughs> I'm starting with the easy stuff first. Oh, you might want to start with the hardest stuff, like, just to make sure that you still have the gold at the end. Oh, I uh, will. I mean, 13, 13 grand worth of gold. This is, this is still rare. It goes, it goes by really fast. I don't understand what is the difference between the handy haversack and a bag of holding. Uh, size, shape, and things. It, it's there's not there's not much difference. One is like a messenger bag, and one's more like a backpack. Uh, okay. Flavor. Um, they 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 do have different uh, like uh. uh sizes um, I, I think one can't carry as much as the other or something like that um, haversack yeah. is easier to organize okay because it's got well, like eight pockets well plus the hewards whatever you're looking for is on top every time mm. Yeah, that's the same for a bag of holding. Yep. You reach in, think about what you want, and it's right there. All right, that I don't like that. It's probably the upgraded in size of what it can be put it inside, I guess. And the, like the opening? Yeah. Like the bag of holding, it's easier to put stuff into than, than a here Sandy Haversack. Uh, Well, like the portable hole is like uh, a square that you f you unfold, and you have uh, like yeah, you have a lot of room in there. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's big. <laughs> you can put a lot of stuff. Um. They say you can find that for four thousand gold. Four thousand, you said. Yep. Um, I'd like to go ahead and try and bargain. All right. Uh, roll me a persuasion check. Sweet. 
What are you offering? Um, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay the four thousand. <laughs> I mean, this isn't say saying that it's that that it's not going to work. It depends on what your offer is. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. It didn't take the roll. No, oh, I got it. It got a seventeen. Oh. Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, two thousand. Oh. nah, these, this uh, I got, I got had to. That's about as much as I actually paid for it. I need to make a profit here. How about twenty five hundred? Ah, uh, come on. Oh, uh, here, uh, thirty five hundred. Mm, how about three thousand? Sold. Okay, the next one I'm going to go for a, a figurine of Wonder's Power. Which one? Um... Just a second, sorry. I'd like to go for the bronze griffin, please. All right, I'm going to need another uh, investigation check. Okay. Nineteen. It takes you several hours, uh, but you do find a shop which actually has a series of them. Um, maybe it has a couple of them. One of them being the Bronze Griffin. Uh, he's also offering that for about three thousand gold. What is? Um, I'd like to bargain again. All right. Well, when you persuasion check, then give me your offer. What are you offering? Uh, List price, 3000 I'm sorry? List price, 3000 Uh, 1500 Yeah. Half the cost is how much I actually got this for. Okay, how about 2000 We both know it's been sitting on the shelf. I can see the dust on the figurine. It's not like you're moving them quickly. With these type of items, of course, they're not going to move that quickly. They're, they're pretty rare. Not very rare. Pretty rare. Uh, 2500 Twenty-two fifty. No deal. All right, twenty-five hundred. All right. So you got a bronze griffin figurine of wondrous power. Okay. Which one did you buy? Bronze Griffin? Yep. Yep. Let's... Sorry. I'm trying to, I did I wrote down what I'm looking for, but it didn't look like look what the uh the rating on it was. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, you could just tell me and I'll tell you if you'll, you'll be able to find it. Okay, Lantern of Revealing. 
Excellent item. Oh, there it is. And I guess I should have gone with an easier one first, but what a lantern mm -hmm. of revealing mm -hmm. a, a an uncommon item? Yep. For only like three hundred gold. I will take it. It's old. Uh, I need to get a forgery kit, please. Yeah, yeah. He, any equipment easily can purchase. Okay. You're you're in water deep, so. Yeah. Okay. It is not showing up. Hold on. Okay, 15 gold pieces. All right. All right. Okay, the next one is, uh, oh, I can't even pronounce the first, uh, ointment. Sort of ointment? Keo something. Keotones. The keg old tones. Yeah. <laughs> Four. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. Well, let, let, let's discuss this one. I mean, you, you could probably easily easily find this in, in, in some sort of uh, 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 shop, Perfect. but... Okay. Hey, um, pal hey, hey, Paladin Pal. Um, yeah, does does lay on hands cure disease or yes. poison? Yes. Um, both. both. It takes five. Uh, it takes five points of healing. Okay. Yep. So you've I got a cleric. You got a cleric, oh. and you've got a we got a walking ointment. Do you want to spend the gold to for this ointment? We picked up a cleric. Yeah, we, we you've, a you've got an elephant man called Zinderlov. Oh, <laughs> I thought oh, okay, never mind. Sorry, that's all right. I thought he was a wizard for some reason. No, that's Cyrus. <laughs> that's me. Okay. <laughs> no, I can hear. Yeah. Um, five points I can cure disease or neutralize the poison affecting the creature. I can do that eight times per long run. Okay. So as long as he doesn't necessarily need, uh, as long as he has the the has the uh, uh, lay on hands point pool, uh, you don't need it. You can still get it. I, I, and I would it's think this would be something that would be like, like 125 gold per per set. Because <laughs> it'd be one, of, it's kind of like one of those like in case of emergencies, me or Gizzy can't get to you. Yeah, you got two paladins, so. Because yeah, we because we literally have to lay hands. So it's one of those that like we can't get to you fast enough. Then that would be okay. a way to use it, but for. 
most common thing. Okay. Well, and Actually, usually, usually poisoned, and because this is dealing with the poison condition and uh, and any okay. other types of long term poisons, you probably would still be able to get a paladin could probably still get to you uh, before you would die. <laughs> So, I know I've been okay, trying to find so like I that. That be useful for everyone. I'm just like, eh, no. I'll uh, I mean, you can get it. I'm going to say 125 gold. I'm not going to say that that it's too much in the uh, the spectrum of uh, uncommon pricing. Um, okay, I'm just going to skip on that one because I have another one on here. A periactive health. Oh yeah. Not the wound closure, the health one, right? Yeah. Hey, I got a question for you. You're doing a lot along the lines of uh, of hit points. Is there a reason why you're really focused on your hit points? Um, I really feel kind of. I mean, the the dragon fight that we had mm -hmm. took out a third of my hit points. <laughs> That's not Cyrus. <laughs> Cyrus, Cyrus, how many hit points do you have currently? I have sixty-seven. Okay, well, I don't feel so bad now, but he's a wizard. He's a squishy, squishy wizard. I just want to yeah. say, I don't think you need to focus on your hit points. Just as like another player. Um, because if you up your AC and stuff, that's much more effective in increasing your survivability, whereas hit points is just a number that doesn't really gauge anything. Okay. For example, like, I have a 20 AC with my reaction up, because I have shield. And I haven't gone down yet in the entire campaign. Aside from our, our scrims that we had... Which don't I, really count. Yeah. yeah. I so, went down a few times, but that was in the very beginning when I had shit. <laughs> they don't. Well, just out of curiosity, how much would that go for? Uh, period of health would be... Hmm, probably 250 gold. Uh, but you don't, you don't really want uh, like a period of health? If wound closure? Could, wound closure would make more sense than Periapa Velt, because Periapa Velt is just about disease, and we have two people in the party like immune to disease and three that can cure it. Okay. Yeah, so wound closure would actually be a better one. Yeah, wound closure would be amazing if you're scared of dying. Yeah, either either one I would say about 250 gold. Uh, what's the wound closure? You stabilize when you are dying at the start of your your turn. So you hit zero hit points. When your turn comes back around, around you immediately stabilize, so you don't need to make death saves. But doesn't his armor do that? Yeah. The armor All right. I think it that. gives you advantage on death saving throws. The armor does that too. And it doesn't stack, does it? No, it doesn't stack. Though the, 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 the armor does not stabilize you. It only gives you advantage on death saving throws, but that that feature would probably be moot if um, you have a period of wound, wound closure. Okay, I'll buy it. Um, quickly, um, sure. Did yeah. you take um a feed or IBA or I uh, oh. ISA uh -huh. for level eight? Did I what? Did you, you take you, a feat or did you increase that when we hit? Level? Um, I took a feat. I took tough. Okay, because I was gonna say, um, because you only have light armor, so there'd be a way for like us to like if you took. He's got medium armor. He, he's got he's, he, he, the. He's a the, warlock. Right. The the death of uh, Deathwalker's ward. He he has. He has proficiency. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, what? oh, yeah, it is light armor. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, because started, um, started, started leather, leather is light armor. Yeah. But it is a plus one light armor, so. Currently plus so one. Just say, like, if there's a way, if you wanted to, like, train or anything, like, to help to be able to, like, uh, take, like, the medium armor feet. Beside, if if you want uh, an item uh, for for healings and stuff, there's one you can get because you're a warlock. What's that? The Colden of Rebirth. No. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna say no. <laughs> I think a better way, a better thing for like. Kind of like Cyrus said, is a better thing for us is to help work on getting your AC higher, so you're just all around harder to hit. Yeah, probably going to be better than having a mat. Yes, having a massive pool of HP is nice, but you don't have to worry about that if you're if it takes a plus eight or so, or even like a plus five in with a crit to hit you, or like something like that. Yeah, things like uh, ring of protection or something. Oh, okay. Because literally, for someone to like when Cribs in battle and he has everything going, uh, you pretty much have to crit to hit him, unless you have a high strength score. They have a high strength score. Because my AC is a twenty-five in battle. Oh, cloak protection would be good too. So. I mean, they only give like the ring and the cloak only give uh, plus one to AC and saving throws. He already has the armor, right? Yeah, he has. He has the Deathwalker's ward. Are you proficient with shields? I am not. No, no they just have simple and light armor for. Yeah, so how about some boots of elven kind? Actually, no, I have, a, I have an idea of something he could get uh, that would be good if he's really scared to, to like to go down. Uh, like I like I said last time, I think it's a really too much great item, but for someone who's not that good in defense, would be still good. Uh, it's the um, uh, say it, cloak of displacement. Uh, the boots of elven kind you would be able to easily find for for two hundred gold. For two hundred. Yep. I'll take them. Find it in an Elvish shop. Yay. Yay, Elvish. <laughs> Is Crackless on here? Uh he he's he's out. He's out. He's working oh, like, he, like yeah, so he he's not able to to okay. be here right now. But he's going to be there right. in the next. Like, uh, hopefully, hopefully he'll be back soon. But and then we'll we'll do if it, when he comes back, we'll do rough, retroactive shopping for him. Okay. I just didn't want to hold up things if if it's just me. No, no, no. Look, things. as I said, we spent an entire episode <laughs> shopping. <laughs> There's no problem. Yeah. So it, it's fine. We're not, you're not really holding anything up. There, and technically, you're not, there's, there's no holding up in D&D. &D. <laughs> this is technically happening when we all did our stuff. You do see after the first day, uh, 
Uh, Kriv looks a little uh, battered and bruised. His husband is is taking it up up to 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 the room to their room, probably uh, the uh, first time for Coitus. <laughs> oh dear. Um, oh my. <laughs> hey, it's our husbandly duty. And 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 and, and Krebus, Krebus doesn't look like uh, it's like. He, he one he looks like a sack of hit points because he's like this big bulky white dragonborn. Level um, twenty, and, and there's or barely he, he, he's not showing any signs that that he's actually been injured or anything. <laughs> Despite the fact that they were, well, wailing on each other. Krabus was beating Krib up. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? Crib did Carmel? really, Crib did really well. Okay. Yeah, he did hit. He he actually got some hits in. What is the difference it's between it's... between normal and that? Oh, I mean, isn't Crib getting the beating normally? I look. I don't have a shade fan. Okay, it's <laughs> one thing I didn't get for Christmas. So let's. No, I, I'm not talking about like actual beating. No, well, yeah. <laughs> anyways. Top link. Okay. Anyways, well, moving on. I remember that else? when you were. So, Crib, you're on here, right? <laughs> yep. Um, so, I was toying with the idea of getting some mithril chain armor then. Because that counts as light armor, does it not? But it has a better uh, AC to it. Um, I, no. No. Uh, hold on. Let me let me pull up something. Mitchell doesn't lower the um, the the like the wave it it takes. So it can be up. medium. It can be any armor that's medium or heavy, but not high. So the the advantage of the only real advantage to mithril is you don't have to worry about the strength requirement, and um, and you also uh, do not take disadvantage from from stealth checks by wearing the armor, but you have to be able to wear this type of armor in order to use it. Gotcha. So okay. So saying mithril chain, you, it's still a chain shirt or chain mail. Um, it, it's it's still that. It's just made of mithril is the only difference. Uh, since you're not proficient, it still would feel really awkward for you. You would have to gain okay. proficiency in at least medium armor for anything that's mithril. Okay. And then you would have to get the in order for Kreif to make it, you would have to get the mithril in order for him to make it, and then he would have to take time because it's a right. magic item. I, I wouldn't actually consider this a magic item, but it's a magic item. It would still take and magic he's item. he's already crafting. making some swords for himself. So. He's busy. Yep. Okay. That's what I spent my money on. In, in, in I bought like 300 books. Okay. <laughs> basically, basically, if you want to learn a proficiency in pretty much anything uh, that involves learning from a book, um, Cyrus can help you out with that. Yeah, I kept some money for rental. There, there are several books, uh, several copies of the many books that Cyrus had purchased and is now hoarding in the secret lair. Oh, I and because it. and because he will have because I also consider Sitter Cyrus not just someone who could like like practically memorize text, memorize stuff that's in books, but also he's a speed reader. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, There's I like a shit ton of money left over. <laughs> yeah. I do too. Surprisingly. My big thing was the commission of my whip flail. 6K. Mine was buying all of the books. <laughs> well, 
my favorite part about this is uh, a lot of Chior's requests for ma magic items here were mostly uncommon. Uncommon, yeah. Well, all well, his sister and Cyrus are looking for rare and very rare items. Yeah, <laughs> I, I will tell you. Th I'll tell you this, Chior. You would not be able to find very rare item at all because uh, of the DCI set for for finding a very oh, yeah. rare item. The um, investigation's not high enough. Yeah, you only have a plus four, so. I have a plus seven. In persuasion. Wait, I mean, I'm talking yeah, about investigation. Oh. You investigation. need you need to be able to find it before you can negotiate for it. <laughs> gotcha. 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 Yeah, the investigations weren't about about being uh, about uh, uh, bargaining. That was about just actually finding it. <laughs> Uh, anything else? Um, actually, um, I would like to um, try and find a cape of the mountebank if I could. <laughs> uh, I mean, no. I mean, I might as well try, right? Yeah, yeah you you, you, you ask around to a shop and you say, uh, "Yeah, this weird blue woman just just bought one for me just a, a couple hours ago." <laughs> Do you have one in my side? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, that was the only one I had. And you know of no one else that might carry something like that? We no, tried. they're not very common here here in Waterdeep. <laughs> if Cyrus wanted one too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and Frederica bought it. <laughs> I, I, I had them do a, a, a an investigation initiative check. <laughs> Whoever had the highest <laughs> highest investigation found it. Gotcha. Okay. See, you got to watch last episode. <laughs> then you know what yeah. everybody else purchased. Sorry, it's been crazy. Been a hell of a week. Mm -hmm. But if someone wants it more than me, I don't mind giving it. It, it, there's one in the party, so yeah. just because you personally don't have it doesn't mean that you may yeah. not be able to use it. I bought a helm of teleportation, a cape of Mount Bank, and I wanted to buy a, um, a flying carpet, but I didn't have the fun at the end. So I asked if people wanted to pull in to buy it, but two of the party were not there. Um, can I go ahead and just buy 4K worth of uh, smithing and enchantment items? Yeah, sure. Things, Easily one. enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, material components, uh, whether it's for for spells or crafting enchanting items, just put the funds into a separate pool. Yeah. Make an item or, or just make a note you have this much gold worth of material components. Yeah, I was putting it in my bag of holding stuff, just so it, like in case anything happens, I have the stuff. Kind of like I wanted to do on our way to Waterdeep. Okay, mm -hmm. would I be able to look for a cloak of displacement? Sure. Roll me an investigation check. <laughs> no, Siren. Cyrus. Cyrus. Bad. Bad Cyrus. <laughs> oh, because we got the thing. It's a, rare, it's a rare one. It's a rare, rare one. It's a rare one. Honestly, it's a rare one that I don't understand why it's rare only. It's th those kind of items that I'm like, this is a bargain. Like, I don't even understand. After still buying that, I still can't, I'm leaving with more money than I came with. <laughs> But if peoples are down, we can all buy a carpet of flying. <laughs> you never talked to us about that and asked yeah. us about. Yes, how I much, did. How much? Uh, was it? Oh, Cyrus, oh. you do find like, one for seven hundred gold. Wasn't it like cool. we all had to chip in like ten k? Yeah, it was ten k if we chip in all. Yeah. On what? We all the that uh, carpet, carpet. What if we just steal it? 
Yes, I like your idea. Uh, it's seven hundred. Yeah, it's. I cheap. will. I will buy it. Yeah, of course you will. I'm assuming that uh, Chior would have talked about how he didn't like how he got hit by the dragon. Yeah. Put this on. I'll throw it at him. Here, uh, Chior, you have you a cloak of displacement. This is going to make the what is it? Uh, hey. You have just. Any, all creatures attacking you have disadvantage. Until you get hit. And even then, it only that only lasts for a turn, and then it activates again. Yeah. And it's a, it's a cloak of displacement, you said. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Though you need to remember something: if you're getting hit in your turn, it ceases to function till the beginning of your next turn. Which will be hopefully a rare occasion. Yeah, no, but that that means he needs to use the disengage and then just run away. <laughs> well, I mean, if they're making range attacks, no, not much you can do about that. But you know, yeah. all right. Uh, would I be able to look for a ring of spell storing? Sure, that's a great item. So great. Oh, it's nothing. It's just a rare item. Oh yeah, totally can find it. Ugh, the attunement slots is annoying. Yep. Yeah, that's why I haven't. I didn't really go shopping much because all my attunement slots are used up. But there's a lot of nice one that doesn't need the attunement slot. Like the the cloak of uh, of displacement is not attunement. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like oh, the, no, the meta or, or the meta ray is not. Sorry, another one that is good. How much do I owe you for the cloak of displacement? Seven hundred. Now that you ask for it. Seven hundred. <laughs> you yeah. You're good. Thank you. Mm hmm Thank you. I figured um, the, the I'm the going to give you uh karma. Um uh, I'm gonna say that this is only a thousand gold. For the ring of oh. spell story. Woohoo! I will buy it. It's a great combo. Oh, I just added a thousand. Here, let's remove two thousand. <laughs> Oops. Oopsie doopsie. Oopsies. Right. Um I don't know why I'm at twenty six thousand now. <laughs> When mm -hmm. I'd like to give the uh, two thousand more to the church for my flail. <laughs> you really want to get that flail? I really do. <laughs> That'll be my main weapon. Plus, it's so before they take your gold, they say, "Honestly, doing it is in three ten days is the fastest we could possibly do it." Now right. we will accept your gold. We just unfortunately can't do it any faster. <laughs> That's fine. Let's hope to give it to I, the church of my god. Okay, so you still spend the gold? Yep. Okay. <sighs> the greedy kind of not looking at this with have, with fun. Uh, she she thanks you uh, immensely for the gold. Just remember, you don't have to spend all your gold. <laughs> I'm still. Uh, it's very little more money than what I came with, but still more money than I came with. I, I, I just want want to make sure that that you're aware. Yeah, I know, but it's also like a lot of the stuff is stuff I want, stuff that I feel like I can use in the future, like the components and stuff, and whatnot. All right. Any other shopping? Um, I'd like to. Put a fourth level spell and a first level spell into my ring of spell storing. Yeah. After you tune to it, you can do that. I would like to. Attune Does anybody to want the periaptive wound closure? Because I can only do 
The cloak of displacement requires attunement, and so does periop. Yep. Does Zinder actually? Does Zinder love has all three of his uh, slot taken? His armor mm. helps him out, I think, since it's awakened. Yeah, but well, well, it's waking when you're. Let's see. Auto wound closure on the cleric. I think it's good. Okay, yeah, yeah. If Cinderblock could use it, go ahead. It's yours. Um, yep, he has an open entombment slot. There you go. Wound closure, all yours. So, funny thing is, because my grimoire doesn't really do anything for me at this exact moment, aside from giving me an extra spell to prep each day, I don't actually have to attune to it. Yeah, because it's, it would still have the spells in there, and you can memorize spells from Exactly, it, so. and you don't have to be attuned to your spellbook to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, are going to attune to the other one? Well, I have I'm attuned to the Atlas of Endless Horizons, the Luck Coin, and then the Ring of Spell Storing. Yeah, that's perfect. Good things. But I'm <sighs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some shade on Cyrus. How dare you not be attuned to three books? I know, right? <laughs> Plus, the, in Tasha, they they've uh, they've taken out uh, lots of uh, books. Oh, I know. I've already bought two of those books. <laughs> <laughs> so you, next one, you need books of exalted deeds and books of vile darkness. You know, both of them at the same time. <laughs> Any other shopping? No. Uh, yeah, I just I just want to. Well, make sure we're I'm, covered. I didn't hurt if anyone wanted to, so I'm just gonna stop asking if, like, I, I get an answer. Okay, okay. So let's discuss this. How much did I say the 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 uh, carpet was again? Remind I don't me. remember if it was ten or twelve. I believe it was twelve. That sounds familiar. All right, twelve thousand gold. Uh, let's see here. Okay, cool. Um, who who would like to contribute to I to a, a to a small carpet? <laughs> I want to. Okay, how much are you contributing? I can contribute to uh, two thousand two hundred. I have wings and the spell fly. <laughs> You're right. Does anybody many, else want to contribute? How many um, people can the rug hold? Can write it? Yeah. Uh, if I remember, what, I'm going to verify which right. one. I think it was the, the second one. Flying carpet. What are the dimensions of the carpet? Yeah, that's just like it's big enough know. for it's big enough for six people. If I remember, I'm not quite sure because when Win said it, I thought he said six feet by four feet, which is enough for one person. It no, can hold four hundred pounds and has a flying speed of sixty for a four by six. It's so it is four by six. That's big like enough. big enough for two people in reality. Oh, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> I thought it was bigger than that. Because if you're you're like oh it's six feet uh, it can hold six people I'm like. That is a 30 foot long carpet or a 15 foot long carpet. But that is a very big carpet of flying. No, but let, look at the it, other Well, the, the thing is, is technically, you, in a five foot square, you're not actually taking up the full five feet. Yeah. You know, it, this, is, this is just for combat. the way for, for combat and, and things like that. So, like a four by six, six. If yeah, you could probably fit two people on there. Oh yeah, no, um, never mind. Never mind. Too small. 
yeah, you would need to find something that might might be would be like the uh, six by nine that can hold eight hundred pounds, uh, but uh, has a flying speed of thirty feet. That's okay. Flying speed, as long as it's flying, it can be it can be used. But no, never mind. We we'll just uh, we're gonna find a way to teleport. That's all. You have the helm of teleportation. I know. Why are we buying the carpet if you already have the helm? <laughs> because there are places that I, we've never been that I can just it's not called teleport. scrying hair flip. Yeah, fair. I don't <laughs> we can be wherever uh, we can be wherever we want to teleport in like half a second. I don't have spells, but thank you. Well, then well, I I it wouldn't be half helmet. a second because uh, you would have to scrying takes ten minutes. I know. <laughs> take ten minutes to scry. You know what I mean, though. <laughs> yeah, sadly, I am making coffee. Will be present but might not talk yeah. oh yes perfect <laughs> all right anything else is no. it this is me just trying to ensure that everything is covered and we're not missing anything so i'd like to go after two more things okay a uh, ring of swimming and a ring of animal influence uh oh yeah because you already have a cloak so was like, yep. why a ring of swimming if you can get like um, a cloak of menta ray? Yeah, I've already got a cloak. Another? Uh, I would say, I would say about uh, about two fifty for the ring. Uh, and for, for the animal for for the for the swimming one okay the animal influence is going to be a little bit more expensive um okay but you i've can got get... over six grand to spell to uh, uh to buy so you can still spend for a ring of water walking if you want you can only wear two rings correct is in 5th in edition it is not said <laughs> items are gauged by um, I mean I, I would say for rings it's probably like depends on your fingers like I could only hold 6 rings oh, because hey. I have because <laughs> I have 3 fingers on each hand yeah okay well I've got five, so Technically, Cyrus, you can do 12. You got four paws. You got four paws. <laughs> okay, so okay. now we're being handsist, and I think we need to bring this up to the DM. Because that is rude. You, you call them hands, but they're, they're, they're paws. They're claws. It's, but honestly, it's okay. We, so we'll here's... Hands. Let, let's... Let, look, you're a dragon. Or we're a dragon. So you would know... That they're, they're, while you are commonly on four limbs when moving around, when it comes to like handling things and, and, uh, like if you, you were actually like working with something or you're using a weapon, you have the four claws were essentially hands and your, your hind claws, uh, were uh, all were feet. So the so four paws are <laughs> no, no, t no toes. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> Only, the, 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 the thing when it comes to rings, though, is just think of how garish you would be and how probably uh, uh, how obvious things would be if you had 10 rings on your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> And anyway, like, there's only four rings that are uh, not attunement, with, with one of them being the Ring of Three Wishes, which is legendary. Mm -hmm. And you only have three attunement slots. So, with the, ra the Ring of Animal Influence would be 3,000 gold. I'm going to go ahead and bargain on that one. 
You can certainly try. Okay. Don't hurt, right? Yeah. Can I find a wand of scowls? It has three charges that while holding it, I can use an action to expend one charge to target a humanoid. The target must succeed on a DC 10 charisma saving throw or be forced to scowl for one minute. He's not budging. Okay, so 3,000. I could never seven. not fail that. 3,000. You could right. voluntarily okay. fail it to make Cyrus feel better. <laughs> so, uh, so, can I look for, for a one? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just hold on a moment. Let me let me do one person at a time. I'm still working with with Cyrus. It's the it's the opposite. Of I'm Cyrus. still I'm still working with Cyrus. Mm. All right. So Cyrus. Mm -hmm. You find a trick magic shop. <laughs> so it doesn't have all of the like really stupid items <laughs> don't do anything <laughs> everything in here is a common a common magical item and does, usually yes. does some sort of tricks you are in luck because they have a set oh, which contains yes. four wands wands of scowl the Wand of Smiles, the Wand of Pyrotechnics, and the Wand of Conducting. <laughs> Fuck um, yes. How much are they? <laughs> here's the best part. 50 gold for the entire set. Fuck yes. <laughs> oh Done. God. Done. <laughs> 50 gold remove. Done. Manage equipment. Wand... Of conducting pyrotechnics, scowls, and smiles all added to my inventory. I would like to immediately use the wand of smiles on the shopkeeper. He it, he see he sees you like like kind of look over with 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 the wand and and he smiles before you even cast it. And you cast it and he's still smiling. It's like that's one of my favorite ones. <laughs> He uses it on himself every morning just to get up in the morning because he is the shopkeeper of a trick magic shop. <laughs> it, it's his retail smile. You, you do do also see in there... <coughs> I think I called this common, didn't I? I'm going to double check here. I think I called this common. I did I say I called it common? Did I call it common? Oh. Please tell me I called it common because it should be. I did. Uh, you do see a pocket watch, which he kind of points out. It's a, a pocket watch in a case with a spring hinged uh, circular silver cover color that closes over the watch dial and crystal, protecting them from dust, scratches, and other, other damage and debris. The watch always shows the current time and date on the material plane and, has, and it has hands and dials for hour, minute, second, month, and day. Oh, that's cool. When Can I get that? I have no wrist. <laughs> he, he, he'll, he'll sell that to you for 25 gold. Cool. What is it? It's a pocket watch. It's a pocket watch. <laughs> now you can tell. It that. is literally, if you, this is a homebrewed item because nowhere in the books uh, of, of, um, nowhere in the books of, uh, of, uh, uh, nowhere in the books of 5e of D&D &D, is there an equipment <laughs> or anything <laughs> for a pocket watch so when one of my former players asked for a pocket watch I went looking for the pocket watch under equipment it wasn't there or even a watch and I'm like this should be a thing so I created a magic item which that's awesome. all it does. All it does, does is tell the time date, and this is, of course, the the time date, uh, time and date of the material plane on where it was created. So it's all based in Faerunian measures. Mm -hmm. 
So it, it it's great for like if you go multiplanar. And then like if you go to the Feywild, uh-huh. that pocket watch is gonna look weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's for for some reason it's the second hand is like spinning in circles. <laughs> <laughs> and then like an hour an hour later you look at it and the second hand is like it looks like it's frozen but if you watch it for a while it does move a little bit <laughs> it's really weird i love it if you stay for a day if you're mm-hmm. lucky it's gonna go back in time not necessarily so are you done cyrus mm-hmm. If you have something, um, um, go ahead. So how many oh, um, <laughs> just casually want to look for the hand in Eye of Vecna. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, awesome. How'd I do? You don't. Maybe. That's how you do. Just it's, people look at oh. you strange. I mean, besides the fact that that the first time they meet you, they kind of get a little like. A little confused because they've never actually like talked with the pseudo dragon, much less this large of the pseudo dragon. But when you ask specifically for the hand or eye of Vecna, they get really confused. It's like some of them just like, why the hell do you want that? Get out of my shop. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like ban you. They just like tell you to go away. That Shoot. sounds about right. Shoot. Sure. Okay. Anyways, moving on to your. Um. So, how much would a ring of water walking be? <laughs> you 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 have the ritual Everything. for water walk. <laughs> Say that again. You have the you ritual have for water walk. <laughs> you have the spell. True. <laughs> yeah, but he could Never do mind. the ritual on the lake. Do the ritual. Uh, I, I, I'm just saying that that's something to keep in mind on this. Uh, but you could find a ring of water walking for about 450 gold. Thank you. Um, I would like to look for a very rare item oh. that isn't a crazy item. Okay, what item? The mirror of life trapping. Oh god, that's a big no no. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay, I have... It's not for anything for us. It's just an idea. <laughs> a fail-safe. I, I, it's, it, it, Cyrus, I think I'm thinking what you're thinking. <laughs> hey, it's that would be really cool if we could pull it off. Just saying. <laughs> All right, go ahead and roll investigation check. Can I use the roll I used earlier? That's a twenty-eight for for your for your roll for ha- the hand of <laughs> the hand, the hand and I effect now. Yeah, no. <laughs> separate roll. I, I, I went into all of the shops. They should know. They should see twenty-four. Sorry. Uh-uh. Oh. Not something you can find. I think I think part part of this was you kept going around asking for the hand and eye of Vecna. So like some people just currently just don't want to do business with you. <laughs> Good job. You're 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 welcome to to all viewers for having uh, for being able to watch a, a, a another shopping episode. <laughs> Travis William Willingham would have hated this, these last <laughs> two episodes. <sighs> Anyways, okay, we're done shopping. Anything else? Um, nope, nope, I'm good. Okay. More sorry, training sorry. and nothing. You got a council to go to. Okay. Could I find any sovereign glue? (laughs) Next week on D&D. They finally get to the council meeting. (laughs) Alright. Roll me an investigation check. 
To be fair, Sovereign Glue would be like the easiest legendary item to find. No. <laughs> it. They, you keep asking for for the, these really extremely rare items. First, you ask for an artifact, which there's like, as far as anybody knows, there's only one of in the entire world. Um, uh, much less multiverse. Uh, then, then you just ask for something that's very rare, and then then you ask for something that's even rarer than very rare. And people are, they're definitely not wanting to do business with you. And plus, uh, no one has one. <laughs> they go, no, we don't have anything called Sovereign Glue. We have regular glue, not the Sovereign Glue. Rude. I just want my Sovereign Glue. I see how it is. Obviously, you are just a bad shopkeeper. Wand of smile. Wand of smiling. <laughs> you want to smile? Uh, wait a minute. What's the uh, DC ten? It, the DC <laughs> is ten. Uh, it, 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 nothing happens. Wand of scowling. <laughs> DC ten. He would, it, nothing seems to change on him. He was already oh. scowling, <laughs> but now he is scowling for the next hour. He doesn't. He doesn't realize it because he's just in the middle of his own scowling. Nerd. This is D and D. I love it. I love it so much. But yeah, actually, they... I've, I've got one more thing that if I could try and get that. Yeah, sure. I want to try and get a circlet of blasting. Oh, yay. Yay, more spells. Um, sure, it's probably 500 gold pieces. I'll take it. Yep. Would I have any time to hit the libraries in there? Yeah, sure. For the council? Um, Basically had two days. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'd like to hit libraries searching for spells. How much would it cost to buy the library? <laughs> <laughs> it's not for sale. Anything's for sale if you have enough money. Money. Or right. extort people enough. Just saying. Uh, are you looking for your specific spells? Um, any warlock spells? spells that I haven't learned yet. Which you well, can't keep in mind, keep in mind, you can keep in mind, the only spells that you can learn are right. ones are, to you are gonna be your... rituals. Rituals, yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry about that. Yeah. So yeah. you're you're much more limited in, in what you can find. Um, go best. ahead and roll me an investigation check. And let me look up Actually, it doesn't have to be a warlock spell. It just needs to be a ritual. Yeah. And you 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 can go up to four, right? Um. Yeah. You find Leoman's tiny hut. Okay. That's it. Anything else? That's it. Mm. A lot of the libraries has have like information more information than they do spells. So the, you, you basically still find the ones that you found previously. But you already have those, so. Right. 
But it did, so you did find uh, one for Learman's tiny hut. So. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Anything else anybody would like to do before we head off to a council meeting? I'm going to take that as nothing. Sorry, guys, I'm there. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Yeah, sorry, I had. Are you ready? Uh, are you ready to attend a council meeting? Yes, I had to wake up the boyfriend because he's sleeping since. <coughs> I oh, gotcha. Frederica. Yes. Yes, honey. Yeah, you, you. All we heard was Frederica. So if you said anything else, we did. We we didn't hear it. I like you saying my name, but uh, I prefer to know why. Sure. Cool. All right. Let's go on. All right. Amen. So you guys all take a long rest. Um, actually... Um, hold on. Uh, I need to pull something up quickly here. Do 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 do. There it is. So before you go to bed, Criv. Uh, Krebus is doing his normal. He, he's he's this is normal for him. He he always is frisky uh, uh, when you're about to go to bed. You're about to go to a council meeting the next day. Are you going to have coitus again? A little light play because I don't want to be exhausted for. <laughs> the just, just oral. I don't want to go through the whole ordeal. <laughs> Well, I see how you are. Oh, okay. Uh, and T. We, we have a council meeting with the higher ups tomorrow. I can't, I can't, I can't be tired. Mm, all right. He's a little disappointing, but you 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 have non constitution check needing coitus. <laughs> it's very, it's a lot more sensual. Than the uh, barbaric sex that uh, they, he's used to, Aww. but strangely enough, he's very sweet. Because that's creepus for you. Can I ask Frederica it's, to help me find the mirror of life trapping? It, it's so <laughs> no. Why not? <laughs> Too late. Okay, after the meeting, then. <laughs> uh, you don't find it. I'm just declaring it just does not exist in water anymore. But I have a really... But Frederica rolled so good! I know, but we've already started to move on. I haven't found any very rare items yet. This is one in one. Well, you're also 8th level. Give it a few levels. Maybe you'll find one. It's gonna come soon enough. <laughs> I want to have a room in my mansion that has a mirror of life trapping in it. So if there's someone I don't like in there, I can be like, hey, step into this room really quickly. <laughs> step into my mirror. <laughs> oh, do you need to use the bathroom? Make sure to use the one at the far end on the left. <laughs> and do wash your hands. <laughs> I have an enchantment that forces people to wash their hands. Anyway, sorry, Wind, go ahead. Moving on. Uh, Kriv, you have an awfully restful sleep. Um, Oddly restful? 
Uh, awfully. Oh. They said oddly. I'm like, uh... Well, whenever... Usually... Here's the thing is, usually when you're... you're, you're you and Crevis are, are, are sure you're bad. You, you get, like, you... He wears you out. <laughs> and you're like, out. Like a light. Um, it's still a uh, good night's sleep. But, so, it is kind of oddly... It, it, odd because this is not the typical restful sleep that you normally get. <laughs> this isn't. You know this isn't you know sleep what? from exhaustion. <laughs> you know what? Screw it. We go hardcore. <laughs> All right. Like, oh my god, don't do it. <laughs> Only a god save. Fail it, fail it, fail it. <laughs> Crit fail would be perfect at this moment. <laughs> By the way, uh, uh, uh. No. <laughs> I'm not gonna beat him. It's yeah, hard to beat a plus eleven. Eleven. I mean, it's only a five plus difference. <laughs> you, you could have made it over twenty. At least. Hey, uh, dice give us and dice take us away. I just want to say, even with a nat 20, he couldn't beat it. So, so Krebus wears you out, but he knows about the whole council meeting, so he's not gonna, gonna be, like, trying to push you on it like he normally does. Especially when he's still ready and raring to go. He's got three, four rounds. Yeah. It, it, you're, like, you're, like, two rounds in, and you, you're, you're exhausted, and he's, like, all ready and raring to go and everything. Uh, but yeah, he, it was just a warm up, and, and then he's like, "Oh, wait a minute, you, you got the thing. You you go to sleep, honey." <laughs> so he's not gonna continue after you fall unconscious. <laughs> and it's no what a great guy! Then it's no longer consensual. Yep. Look, I'm he's husband. neutral. Good. <laughs> I'm his husband. He's not gonna do that to me. He, he's neutral good so he he, he likes to, to to get jiggy with it but you he know likes it rough, but he likes it consensual <laughs> yeah consent is his foreplay ta-da Yay. a t-shirt that you can get at sizzle.com slash cups out loud <laughs> bing um anyways uh, enough of that the shameless plugging it's never shameless I mean, this does post to the Cubs Out Loud YouTube channel. You guys know that, right? It's, it's there. It's, it's kind of like in the splash screen at the beginning. Anyways, moving on. So the next morning, uh, you get up. Uh, you have a delicious breakfast uh, made by uh, Chef Dionis. Um, uh, and uh, Leosin uh, comes down the stairs. And says, the council meeting will be in a couple hours. I can definitely escort, escort you there, um, especially considering the gods will probably not be familiar with you, but they are familiar with me. Uh, so I'll be able to get you in. And he uh, leads you. Where does it take place again? I, I don't remember where it says it in here, of where it takes place. <laughs> but it's wherever the open Lord of Waterdeep holds his court. <laughs> um, let's see. Where is it? It says, so recently the, there has been an up bringing up the Cult of the Dragon's efforts uh, throughout the land, um, not just not just here on the Sword Coast. Um, and we have brought min, many members of different factions in, uh, especially of the Lord's Alliance, um, also representing the Harpers, will be uh, Ramala... Oh, where is it? Where is your name? Ramala Heaventree. She is heading our efforts in regards to the Cult of the Dragon. Uh, 
when in, when you do meet her after you know acknowledging an introduction, she may ask you to call her Remy, as she is known. Uh, you also you do know the representative for the Order of the Gauntlet, Anthafum. Uh, for the group known as the Emerald Enclave, the representative will be Dallin Winterhound. For the Lords Alliance, of course, there will be Lord Dagalt Never Never Ember, as he is the current current open Lord of Waterdeep. From uh, from Mithra Hall. Uh, in the Dwarf Holds of the North will be Ambassador uh, Conrad Bron Anvil. Uh, and he points out these people, so like uh, Dagalt is a human human male. Uh, De Delan Winterhound uh, is a male half-elf ranger. Well, half-elf. On Tharfroom, of course, is that portly male human who we keep thinking is a dwarf, but he's much taller than one. Ramala Haventree is a moon elf. Uh, Brown Anvil, of course, is a dwarf. Uh, coming from uh, Baldur's Gate in the uh, Flaming Fist is Marshal, Al Marshal Alder Raven God, who's a male human. Uh, from the Misty Forest, and uh, representing both the Misty Forest and the High Forest, is the Wild Elf uh, King Melendrock. From Silvery Moon is uh, Tern Hornblade. He is also sometimes referred to as Thunder Spells. But uh, you might want to just stick with, with Tern. Uh, from Cormir is Sir Estevel, a human. And those are the who will be the members of the council. Uh, and as you as you enter into this like secret chamber, there does look to be a gallery uh, with a bunch of nobles uh, bickering and and this arguing, debating is probably more like it over what's going on. Uh, you see the council uh, uh, convene onto a platform with this kind of like moon shaped table which kind of faces out. It's in a place where it's kind of like everybody can kind of like easily look into each other, but it's also kind of a display for those who are um, observing the event. Um, and um, there's a gavel as uh, Lord uh, Never Ember adjourns the meeting. He greets everyone. And, uh, of course, introduces everybody in, in turn. And they start a discussion. I am terrible at this type of thing, so I'm going to just summarize um, most everything, except when it's directly, they're directly addressing you. Sounds good. So... Uh, the the they start talking about the uh, the current happenings in the very city states uh, and uh, what's been happening across the country with the cult of the dragon saying that it must be stop. They don't know exactly what's what's going on here. And uh, Ramallah says, um. As soon as most everybody has said their stay, says this, oh, we did have some adventurers working for us. Anthur, you have met them already. 
Um, the Pyre of Faith has been in helping us investigate this. Uh, well, would one of you please come up and explain everything that has happened so far so we know kind of what the, the whole situation is? Uh, I'll tap Kriv on the shoulder and then I'll go up there with him. So, Craver, are you going to be to address and summarize? Sorry, yes, I had, forgot to have myself muted. I said I was going to come up and uh, go and summarize everything that is has happened in our adventures as of late. What we have seen, who we've gone up against, all uh, the information that we know. Uh, one of those being that they're that they're attempting to bring Tiamat into the world. the different people that we've come up against inside of the Cult of the Dragon and who we have dealt with. Like, or no, like, uh, Resimir, who is no longer who we killed. And, uh, no, Lord, let see. What was the read point? Uh, the, uh, dwarf from, uh, the Dwarf Holds of the North, Braun Anvil, says, You let the giants have the castle back? Why didn't you take it? It would have been a great asset. It was- I'd like to snap at him and be like, Because the giants helped us kill a goddamn dragon. I'm not about to fight a storm giant because you tiny little dick ass wanted to have a castle. Uh, All right? Uh, 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 that, that's not... It was upon... Uh... I try to stop Cyrus. Like it, it was our agreement with them not going against us at the time, making it so we didn't have we had less of people to deal with, and all that we would let them be. It seems like this has to, like, granted with everything, including having to deal with the cult. Then our uh, resume, all the, the wizards, the red wizards of Scorn, and the ancient white dragon on with that. Dealing with the dragon, the giants on top of that, and the ogres that were there, it seems like a better maneuver at the time to try to have them on our side by let, like, making an agreement with them. Uh, this can help us further and later. With them being on our side, we do have this. We, we are able to acquire this banner and uh, bring out the banner from them that the king himself gave us as a reward for us helping him out. So we already have partial good standings with the king himself. Oh, uh, one later. thing, let, let me correct you on something. He is not a king, <laughs> it was just his castle. <laughs> but. I, I would assume that you would would have said it in the, the tone yeah. that he was stirring up, uh, trying to stir up the the giants, and that this would probably help them in their their goals by focusing them on this draconic threat, yeah. uh, which and- they would know giants and dragons don't usually get along. <laughs> so with us helping him out. We already have a partial good standings with, which can lead later on lead to positive things. Come time to deal with it. It was a decision that had to be made in the haste. If we had more time, things could have worked out maybe a little better. But all plans don't survive the war. Althar strokes his beard and says, oh, the giants would probably be very useful when, when, if we do need to make a major assault. But things are advancing right now, but we're not entirely sure. Um, they talk about the recent sense of unease. Um, the 
again, the only one who actually heard anything. Everybody else just kind of like felt this sense of unease and just everything went silent for a few moments. But Kriv, you heard the faint sound of a horn beckoning you somewhere. But based off of your current form, it didn't really have like much effect. You just could sense it. So they talk about that that sense of unease. And uh, let's see. Who talks about it? They believe that there was a uh, tiefling sorcerer might ha- that might have some more information about what this thing was, um, known as Macath the Crimson. Uh, she disappeared. She disappeared about three years ago in the Sea of Moving Heights. Um. They actually ask, uh, as adventurers, this sounds like something that might be up your order, um, if you could go and search for um, Macath and they see if we can find some more information about what this was. Uh, Ramallah actually says, we do have some, ho- some sources that say that it was some sort of horn. We're not exactly sure, but... Uh, but we do believe that Macath the Crimson would be able to provide us more information. At the mention of that, um, Kriv would say what he felt or heard. That it seemed like others didn't really recognize the fact. Like I, he heard a horn, but it didn't look. He looked around, and kind of what he felt the. Like everything had like stopped for a moment. He heard this horn. What well, not able of being sure what it was, but kind of just asserting that yeah, this is what. Um. Ah. Oh, here we go. Uh, from. Uh, from nearby, there was the water deviant noble. Um, it says, Excuse me, counsel. Uh, I am Dalla Sil- Silmerhelf, um, noble here in Waterdeep. Um, the disturbance has been sensed across the Sword Coast. It is the Drakhorn. It's an ancient device whose sound, sounding alerts dragons across Faerun that great events are unfolding. It's impossible to say what the sound means, but the dragons hear it clearly and will eventually answer its call. There's some murmurs around the call, the uh, gallery uh, at the kind of startle, startling of it. Now, hearing of the track, hearing the word dragon horn, does that jog in memory and proof? Uh, yes. Uh, hold on. I wonder, do I have a thing about this? Maybe it's here? Ah. Uh-huh. Uh, I added something to your journal. Because this is something only you would know. Mm-hmm. It is also something that only dragons really know about. Uh, 
uh, the um, Never Ember uh, says, that is interesting information. Um, where did you come about this information? As Silverhelm, uh, Sil Silmerhelv, <sighs> uh, I'm just going to call her Dala because that's her, name, her first name. Dala says, uh, I, I'm sorry, I am unable to provide that information. Um, Revengard, uh, Conrad, and uh, Froom all look at her suspiciously. And why not? Says, says Connor, uh, uh, Reverend Guard. She says, I'm sorry, but the, my source wishes to remain anonymous. Anything you would like to do? I'll tell the group later on about this. Hmm. Um, oh, here, here's the section I was actually looking for. Uh, after the discussion about the Dracorn and the basically... Quest one has entered your quest log. Uh, find uh, Macath in the uh, Sea of Moving Ice. Uh, Ramallah, uh, Remy, to make it easier, uh, after every one has spoken, he says, uh, another thing that we have fa found is that we believe that one of the worm speakers of the Cult of the Dragon a, a Verum, Verum the White, uh, has been spotted. We, we the Hoppers, do have the informa have some information about her his whereabouts, and I would suggest, as he is a high member of the Cult of the Dragon, that his capture or even even his assassination would be appropriate in order to stop the machinations of the Cult of the Dragon. Is there one that is preferred over the other? Assassination, kidnapping? Uh, Never Ember uh, uh, discuss, says, I, we will leave that up to you. However, it is probably best that you capture so we can pr see about getting possibly more information about the cult extracted from him. However, even the death of one of these worm speakers would probably be for the best in any case. It is noted. Him being dead does not necessarily preclude getting more information from him. Yes, we are familiar with the speak with dead spells, but... Sometimes it's better that they are alive because you could only do so much with the speak with that spell. Well, with that, we have preparations to be made for this journey then. Uh, for taking on these tasks, we would like to present you. We would like to deputize you as part of the, as adventurers for the Council of Waterdeep. Um, they uh, provide you with a writ demonstrating that you have emergency investigative powers. Ooh. This can get you access to resources and sites you deem necessary, uh, access to resources and sites you deem necessary for your investigation. But you also have to carry, have to think about this. The council is giving this to you to help you with this. If something should happen, they could easily take it away. Abusing it or whatnot. Yes. 
And um, is there any other things before we end this session of the council? Take out says, and a glowy blonde haired human. Uh, I, I I put the question mark there because her hair is kind of glowy. Kalash um, bar. Uh, not a clash star in <laughs> Asmer. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, steps up and says, says, uh, members of the Council of Waterdeep, uh, I am a representative of the Eyes of Io. Uh, we are not from Toral, but we come here of our own, for our own reasons. Uh, we believe in your believe that this is definitely a threat not just towards Toral, but also to all of the multiverse. We wish to be patrons to this to the pyre of faith. We will help with with resources and possibly even provide some boons. Ooh. Dagalt says the eyes of Io. Why should we trust you with this patronage? Io is the progenitor of both Bahamut and Tiamat. We are his their servant, and uh. we stand on neutral ground amongst between these two. But we do believe. That Tiamat should stay in Avernus. And that is the will of Io. And again, this may be, we believe that this may not just affect you and Toral, but also us on our own world of Iodron. At this, uh, Krivel will step up and just say, Lord, the progenitors of Io have helped us out in our quest. Before. The eyes of Io. The eyes of Io. They have helped us out before and have proven themselves allied to our cause. Kind of just sticking up for them. Uh, roll me a persuasion check. Nice constitution say. Oh, that was that was for previously. Persuasion I segment Perfect. through yet. You said persuasion? Yeah. Yep. Uh I want to activate my uh, channel divinity. Okay, plus five. Do it. So yeah, it's a twenty-six. Uh the council members kind of look at each other and they, and you're getting some nods, shrugs, and like, eh, no flesh off our back. Um, and uh, they seem pretty. Uh, and are they still people ups getting upset by this, uh, like this decision? No, they, they're, they're like, okay, so. We're giving them max. So the writ gives you access to like places and locations and uh, those type of resources. This patronage basically supports you in other ways. So basically you're getting a group patron of the eyes of Io. Yay. Like in Dasha. Or, or in Eberron. <laughs> yeah, that works too. <laughs> Gosh, I just kind of played it, made it all yeah. worlds. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
the meeting basically adjourns, uh, having that the Pyre of Faith have been given their quest for this part of their journey. Yes. Um, when we're going to go back alone, I'm going to have to talk. But not in front of the meeting. Because yeah, if I, I open tell- my mouth, I'm going to upset people. And- I tell everyone that we should head back to the tavern. Um, I have things that must be discussed. But I cannot say in front of So, uh, Sylvia, actually, she probably had mentioned her name uh, when she was introducing herself. Um, Sylvia comes up to you and says, Long time no see since the greenest. It has been a while. Yes, it has. Um, how are your dragons doing? Growing every day. That is great to hear. Uh, they, fought, they fought bravely in the attack of the castle. Oh, they participated. Excellent. Sure it, it was always great to train train them. Have you thought of being... It, something tells me that you would make a great dragon keeper... Sister Frederica. What is that dragon keeper? Well, it is it is someone that's on, on Iodrom. We do have some people who fighters of a type, but uh, they have a companion. They usually hatch and raise a dragon in their adventures. Keep going. I like the idea. Yeah, I don't have the specifics about it, but basically it's yeah. going to be your fighter sub- subclass that we're figuring yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think Shutan would be a great candidate for that. Well, it would have to be the both of you, but... Yeah, but I mean, as the one that I'm going to keep with. Well, I found it very interesting that that he was half half in Conum. Conum dragons are very rare. Is still looking for the one that that's been popping through the multiverse. Maybe that's gonna help to find it soon, sooner or later. Yes, maybe in a few more levels. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> right. Or I could just throw it to you right now and uh, have you all decimated. But you know, whatever. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I understand that you have taken up residence in the Iron Bear Tavern. That is true. That is our my tavern, me and my partner's tavern here. That we well, use as a base for when we're here. Well, if uh, when you are ready, uh, if you will meet me at uh, just outside the to the south gate. Uh, we have actually uh, taken up residence in a manor in a uh, mansion that's uh, just outside of Waterdeep. And I can escort you there. Okay. Then we can show you what you got. Okay. With, our, with our patronage. And uh, with that, we will take a break. About yeah. what? And um, we'll... just, just having to say... I'm going to have to leave at four. Fortunately. Okay. In how long? At four. At four. Like, it, now... it is currently one o'clock my time. Okay. Me, it's two o'clock. So in two hours. Okay. Yeah. That, that's kind of like normal. But that should be the normal end time. Yeah. So. Yeah. But that's why I'm saying it, today mm-hmm. I cannot do overtime. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sadly. But you can all continue. I don't mind. Yeah. Okay. So I will be. We'll be right back. Five minute break. Yeah, five minute. Bye, guys.
Sim Sam Faras. I'm gonna eat a Yujas Reese. Come back. This is all. guys hear that hear what my cat is purring no can't hear that He's such a fat cat what do you want i just want to give you love My cat and my Tuesday night game, or my formerly Tuesday night, now Wednesday night game. Um, <clears throat> he demands fish. Because I can speak with him. Oh, yeah, when I've kind of been, I know we still got a ways to it, but I've been looking Hello. at um, just other homebrews, Path of the Dragon type things. All of them suck. <laughs> Literally, all the ones homebrewed on there just suck. Yeah, I still haven't really put much thought into it. I mean, I, I'm sure have that three levels to go. So yeah, the yeah. So I, I don't feel like I rushed for for yeah. doing it. <laughs> it's like we get plenty of time. I got because then I can be to level twelve. The feature. Eleven, they get that twelve. Yeah, so, yeah, because you got the first level, second level, third level. So, uh, no, actually, you would be a level 11. Math is hard. Uh, well. well, and I think that's the same for, for figuring out Dragon Keeper. So, uh, the fighter archetype, Dragon Keeper, and the, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be calling it the Path of Draconic Fury. For the uh, barbarian path. Well, Priv. Yeah, Pasta. What you gonna do with like heavy armor? I mean, just because you're a barbarian doesn't mean you can't wear armor. Yeah, you're you're right. It, it's for the amount uh, that he's probably going to take barbarian yeah because i think kriv you're going to be primarily paladin with some levels of barb did you meet again i have there we go I, i'm i haven't fully decided yet if what i'm doing like mm. if i'm going to go all the rest barbarian or What? Yeah, because at that point, then you would be ditching your armor, it's, um, which isn't a bad thing. It's no, it's not a bad choice. thing. The only reason I'm I'm asking is because mm -hmm. I know there's um, the rage feature of the barbarians. They're okay if you wear medium or light armor, but if you wear heavy armor, you don't get the resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Uh, and that is the... not true. Sure. I'm. 
I, I'm looking it up right now. Rage. It is true. Oh, if you aren't wearing heavy armor, yeah. Yeah, because I tried. I tried in the past to make a. Uh... Hold on, just bleeding. Sorry, <laughs> I tried in the past to make a um, uh, barbarian fighter, and just don't use the unarmed um, unarmed armor, like uh, unarmed de defense, and use a plate and uh, my super DM, which is. Uh, worse of a D of a rule lawyer than me <laughs> told me, yeah, not gonna work. Mm -mm. I was like, I would figure something out with my armor, maybe somehow it turns. <laughs> Perhaps some, there's some sort of godly boon that can do something about that for you. No. <laughs> All right, everybody back. So now I only five levels in barbarian because then I get an extra ten feet of movement. When you're unarmored. Yeah, when you aren't wearing heavy. Yeah, I yeah. So, presuming to the point at one point, Kriv won't have heavy armor. He'll have something else. A thick hide. Because. Well, there is a feet dragon hide, but still. Yeah. And you can still use shields, so. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how things go, because. Yeah, there's still time for all the stuff and figure things out. Because also, it's based on. Because with unarmored defense, it would be 10 plus my, pretty much my constitution. Because I have no dexterity. So you would at least need some sort of armor. And the... Uh... Dragon. But at least, if anything, it's it's when you aren't wearing heavy armor. Yeah, I think so. So you could still wear armor and not worry about the unarmed defense. But yeah, just do the best heavy armor I can, or medium armor that I can. Mm -hmm. Oh, Depending on your research. on your decks, there's a um, medium armor master, I think. Well, I have to. Yeah, you don't have decks. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> My deck is zero. Sorry, then. That's the whole was like reason. All right, everybody back? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have a GR? Yep, I'm here. Okay, cool. All right. So meetings adjourned. So you got two quests. One to uh, search out for Worm Speaker Verum, the white. And also to search for Macath Crimson, a tiefling sorcerer of the Arcane Brotherhood. Uh, who may have knowledge about this rock horn. And uh, you also kind of have a side quest, although it's kind of part of the main quest. You also have a quest. <laughs> <laughs> to, to go uh, meet your patrons. Um, yes. I think that's the first um, first thing we should do. Before any, any preparations, at least go meet our patrons now and everything. Sounds good. All right. So mm -hmm. I agree. 
yep. heading out to the south side of town. Um, you meet up with uh, Sylvia, uh, who has a, a carriage with enough room for everybody. And uh, she leads you off to a grand mansion. Well, hello, Grand Mansion. It's almost as fancy as mine. <laughs> so, just to say that uh, uh, I, I got this while searching. I actually think I found this on a Reddit thread. Uh, somebody was trying to design their own map for their magnificent mansion. And Oh, my goodness. And it's supposedly... It, it didn't really have a key... So I don't know like all the specifics of what was intended, but apparently there's uh, rooms for that are themed for each class. Oh, lovely. So I, I don't have a grid or anything on, on this. This is m mainly for show. <laughs> and if, if we wanted to do, do some sort of like positional role play or something like that in here, but I thought it would be, be neat. There's the bucket. It's cool. I like it. The bottom, the bottom image is the uh, upper level. Yes. So top image yeah. is the the first floor. The second floor is the the other one. You can see the staircase leading up and down in the middle there. Nice. But. Uh, Breeding you just outside the doors is a very familiar copper dragonborn and a gold dragonborn um, standing right next to him. Um, a, who you recognized uh, to be Leon. Uh, Leon Drakanov. Go up, uh, Kriv will go up to him and just like clasp his hands with him and greet him and as like, well, like, uh, like a friend you haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, he says hello and he says, and he goes, you can uh, go and he kind of shows you around the place uh, and you roll along some of the other members uh, who he introduces you. Like, uh, he says, this is my husband, the paladin of Io, uh, Bamoon, uh, who Kriv, you remember in a dream fighting. Yeah. Uh, uh, as you, you pass a, a uh, series of books, you see a orc and a uh, another copper dragonborn who has similar features but doesn't look identical, but definitely sibling-ish look between the two. Uh, and he points out, that's my brother Zeon. He's a sorcerer. And uh, that is Jorn. He is a uh, he is a warlock of Devosa. Uh, celestial being of Io. Um, he uh, also uh, perusing some books is a Flame-haired, very excited-looking, uh, a, a fire genasi, who, who, when he looks up and he sees Cyrus, and he gets really excited. <gasps> you! <laughs> and he just rushes up to Cyrus. Cyrus, and you just like kind of like I, I'm assuming you're like on Chris' shoulder still. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he comes up to you and he like like grabs you and lifts you up. <gasps> I I've seen you in like a dream or something. You are so cool. And he just kind of lets you go, which I assume then you start flapping and floating. <laughs> yeah, I'm like okay, dude. That's touchy touchy. I think he's <laughs> fired up. Um. <laughs> You see, sorry, if, no touchy touchy. 
<laughs> if I'm uh, correct, this is the guy that gave me the grimoire, correct? From the Scram? When we were doing the Level PvP 20. stuff, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, this was the last. Yeah, this was the last one. Okay. Well, he didn't give you one. It's it's you won, and it like appeared next to you when you woke up. In the yeah, but he, he was your pre-fight. Yes, <laughs> that's pre-fight. Yeah, I'm gonna like be like I recognize you too. That's no. weird. It it's just so weird. It's like we we're meant to be be each other. I mean, like you're a wizard, I'm a wizard. It's so amazing. <laughs> How many do you want to go? Do you have? Do... Oh boy! <laughs> do you want to go into the back corner of the room, not talk to anyone, and compare spell books? <gasps> totally. <laughs> Cyrus, we're here for we're here for a purpose right now. Oh, we'll do that in a bit, I guess. I'll do Aww. the same with the warlock. <laughs> <laughs> the warlock is. The warlock seems very serene. Uh, he seems like very knowledgeable. He is very tome based. Uh, actually, he's not tome based. He's uh, uh, chain based. Uh, but you can tell by the uh, the um, the brass pseudo dragon that is uh, hanging around his neck. Just kind of like snuggled on his shoulder. Traitor. Cool. Anyway. Um, uh, you do see sparring in uh, about a, a sparring area. Is that probably, probably like right here? Uh, you see someone that Frederica will recognize. Uh, actually, he. he He's probably currently in his werewolf form or werebear form. Um, sparring with a brass dragonborn. Uh, the werebear there is Ethan. He's a blood hunter of the Order of the Lycan. Um, and sparring with him is Rourke. Uh, you do also see... Um, uh, looking on, you see a human with mutton chops. Um, he looks like he's uh, kind of just playing with one of his guns. Okay. Um, you come and uh, just right across, still kind of watching it, just kind of like strumming on a loot as a dwarf bard. Uh, it, continuing to tour, uh, working in uh, the garden. In a garden is a halfling, uh, which looks to be a druid because you see her doing some druid crafty things. Uh, that is okay. So we got the gunslinger named Mac. Uh, the uh, dwarf bard is named Auric. Uh, you obviously you met Sylvia. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Who else is part of these group? Oh yeah. Uh, and he uh, takes you to a workshop, which along one wall is this, is just a bunch of bags, uh, messenger bags, uh, backpackish bags of all different colors uh, and uh, you hear some clanging in the back back and you know, goes quot pyre of faith is here and a familiar little gnome comes it, the clanging stops a familiar little gnome with the, the big bushy beard and these goggles goggles on comes back and he he lifts them up and you see this kind of like ring where there's like soot, like some sort of soot was around it like uh, because he was in amongst the forge 
and says, oh, what do we got here? And uh, behind him comes this big construct thing. Uh, also, Warforge. Oh. I'd like you to meet Quart, our artificer, and his assistant, Lifter. Yeah, we've seen Quart. He made us the Ds, and I take out the, uh, the coin purse. Oh. Oh. When did you deliver those? Oh, it's back in Greenest. By the way, uh, I see you got some new people since you met. Yeah. And he he, he goes well, behind he goes behind a counter. He just kind of like disappears behind the counter. And then you hear uh, you hear jumble and, uh, and he jumps up onto something. You see him on the top and it says here. And he, he hands out two more of these little coin purses uh, for the two new guys. So, um, both Gizli well, and you. both Gizli and uh, Chior get a quartz ever keep coin keeper. Awesome. Uh, Cyrus, sister, and Kriv should already have one. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, uh, and Zindralov. Um And this does what? <laughs> okay. So let's talk about the Everkeep Coin Keeper. This leather drawstring pouch has an interior space considerably larger than its outside dimensions. Even Quart himself doesn't know the actual dimensions. The pouch's opening is no more than three inches in diameter and looks like a pouch about four to five inches deep, partially filled with coins. The pouch jingles when you shake it, even if the bag is empty. The patch can hold up to 10,000 platinum pieces worth of coins, no matter what type of coin is placed in a bag. The pouch weighs one pound, regardless of its contents. Retrieving an item from the pouch requires an action. The pouch can be magically bound to an article of clothing, such as a belt. Should the pouch ever be more than 50 feet from the article that it's bound to, the pouch will magically teleport to the article and attach itself. The pouch may also be bound to a person, so only that person can open the pouch. Note these are bounds, not attunes. Slightly different. Um, if the pouch cool. is over the lid. And then blah, 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 bag of holding, me, uh, mumbo jumbo. Don't mix the stuff. Bad thing happen. Go boomy boomy. Yeah. Black hole. Uh, I, I, it looks like you've got a uh, one of the, the, the Hewlett's handy haversacks and you got some a uh, couple of bags of holding. Did you need more? And he points to the wall with all the bags. You can take what you need. Okay. <laughs> so basically, basically, just just one a piece, please. I mean, I can, I can make as many as I want, but they do take time to make, so I need to restock. Yeah, I usually do these in my spare time. Lila usually helps make the actual bag itself, and then I do the enchantment. Okay, I, I'm guessing that what I have is about what's on the wall, so... You already have a bag of holding? Well, I've got uh, the... Oh, yeah, you have the haversack. That's right. Right. Uh, Zindralop is going to take a, a bag of holding. I like how this section is basically the catch-up on uh, magic items that everyone needs. <laughs> yes. Um, can I look I, at the... Uh... Oh, go ahead, Chris. Oh, I was just say I was going to change out my bag of holding for the uh, few words handy haversack. Sure. You, you guys can also... He's got a plethora of colors, and if you want it changed... He will definitely change it for you. That is an easy thing to do, and he can do that really quickly. Um, I don't have no bag of old things. Oh, no. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, mind, um, he's got an entire wall, so you could just, just grab one. <laughs> oh. it's, it's like he does, like everybody can have a bag of holding <laughs> or a, 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 a handy haversack. If you already have one because you didn't take it from him, you could take another one. 
<laughs> so like Ooh, Criv, with the haversack. So so Criv could could basically have his bag of holding that he uses for like the everybody loot, and then have a ha- handy haversack for his own stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, the handy haversack is going to be blue with gold trimming. I'm going to ask the gnome if he can do something special. Uh, what you looking for? You know, bag of holding, uh, creatures cannot live in there, right? Oh, no, not recommend. Well, I mean, they could technically go in there. The only thing is that it only has so much air. Yeah. Would there be a way for, like, a smaller one just to put a creature in? Like a permanent interdimensional space that basically kind of refreshes its own air. Yeah, or at least they ha- that has a more like lengthy time that I can just open up and give air. Hmm. Might be something I would have to develop. You know what? I think I've heard of something. I think it was on Alexandria there was a thing. Oh, Alexandria. Great place to go on vacations. I mean, after that whole Vecna thing? After. Sure. <laughs> you go... <laughs> it's the best time. It's so low to rent a place. <laughs> mm, yeah, By the way, did, did, we lose, uh, did we lose someone? Like, he's not on World 20 right now. Yeah, Tor. I'm still here. Okay. It's just, just not directly on roll twenty. We're doing a lot of role play stuff here for right now. Yeah. Uh no, I'm doing crit and here it is. Like, big enough to put a medium creature in? <laughs> you can just tote around, Shaitan. Yeah, but some, sometimes I cannot just bring him, but I want him to be there, and I don't want to, like, spend Cyrus's mm. use of opening the, the gate. I know what I can look at, I think. Well, why couldn't he just come along? Most of the time, he's, he's able to be invisible. Yeah, for like now on, but when, like I said, if I want to bring Shutant in water deep, true. <laughs> yeah, there are places it's not really safe. <laughs> oh, we lost someone. Oh, I know. You guys still there? Yeah, yep. we're there. Okay. I, I was Locked just there for a minute. Fun. Okay. There was a thing called Alexandria. I think it was a. It was an old thing from way back in there, the the ancient days. I can't remember what they called it. Age of Arcanum. I think it was. Um, it, it was related to. The Raven Queen. I think it was called Raven Slumber. And it was this little crystal thing that allowed you to, which uh, as an action, you could teleport a creature to a demiplane. And uh, and if they weren't willing to go, go, they would have to make a wisdom saving throw. I don't care. <laughs> Hashtag a Pokeball. I love it. Yeah. Basically a Pokeball. I love it. Yeah, from my That's understanding, awesome. the there was there was such an artifact that uh, the the headmistress of the the Grey Hunt uh, out of uh, Whitestone, uh, I believe her name is uh, the Vexalia de Rolo. Uh, uh, she has one of these for her bear. So 
that might be something I would have to figure out how that works. Works. I asked her one time if I could kind of like study it a little and see if I could replicate sort of, some sort of thing, but she wouldn't let me. And I was like, like, I, I promise I would be right there and everything. I even asked uh, uh, one of her friends, Terry and Darrington, who's an art fish, just like me. But she's very possessive, I suppose. But I'm sure I, I, can I have the idea. I can kind of understand it. Might take a while to put together, though. That's cool. Uh, where do, where should I find that woman? Well, she's a right now. She's on Alexandria, so she's oh. not even on this this plane of existence. <clears throat> yeah, that made. Or, or well, well, I suppose it technically is this plane of existence because it is the material plane, but it's a different world. You know, kind of like we're from Iodron. That that's you're you're from Ravnica, aren't you? From the, the you're, totally when the fell Dakin things. Yeah, uh, they're they're, they're kind of like that, but. I mean, she probably wouldn't give that to you because you know she just uses that for a bear. Yeah, I know. She already has has an animal that she uses it for, but I think I can do it. It's just going to take some time. No problem. Anyway, Shutant needs to get ready to fight more and more as time comes. He's gonna he's gonna be a great fighter in the fight. Oh, you're gonna become a dragon keeper. Uh, the idea has been pronounced. Uh, I need to talk with Shotan to know if he wants to. Yeah, you kind of have uh, to be a buddy with the with the dragon. Now, here's the question: Is really the dragon keeper way? You have to start start out with the egg. You have to take care of the egg and then be there for when it hatches, so that it can bond with you and it looks up, up to I you. Did that. I did that already. Oh, okay. So you you got a head start. You already have my baby. Yeah. See, I do research on everything involving these things. Because Could I, I be a dragon to keeper everything. too? <laughs> well, I don't know if you could really be a dragon keeper since you're kind of a dragon already. It would just be I know. That would be kind of weird. That would it kind is. of be like being a beekeeper, but being a bee. You could be, you <laughs> could be a dragon buddy. I mean, if it was like some sort of draconic school of magic, because you seem very wizardly to me. I am magic man. Yeah, I know these things. <laughs> School of Dragon Magic. I mean, I I told Lifter here that maybe he should try try doing it, especially considering we found some dragon eggs one time. Hey, and uh, we were trying to actually, we were rescuing him. I thought, hey, he would make a great dragon keeper. And then he he just didn't say anything because he's not very talkative. That looks like me. And by the way, he's not really construct. He has ceilings and everything. He's called a Warforged. Oh. I know there are not many of them around here in Faerun. Yeah, we don't see a lot of them. They're actually quite rare. Yeah. Uh, you see them, like, everywhere over in Eberron. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Eberron. It seems like a place that would be very fun to go one day. Uh, I don't oh, know about that. No. no, it's not that fun. They got some great technology things. Like I love their airships. Totally different than the airships here, which are kind of like more like battle balloons. Yeah, I'd like to sh open up my um, my Atlas of Endless Horizons and be like, I can't wait to cast this spell one day and show him Gate. Because <laughs> I, uh, I have Gate already, but I'm you know I'm not a seventeenth level wizard. <laughs> it's like one day I'm gonna travel the multiverse. I can't wait. I mean, if you want to, a uh, firing would, would would definitely help you out with that. Or one, day, here. one day, Cyrus, I'll bring you to uh, Ravnik. That would be so cool. Is there a very cool ancient dragon that lives there that I would be able to study under that's a mythic, powerful level wizard? Uh, he's above that. <laughs> Casual MTG reference. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, sorry, my my my. I need to go for a second. You can mm. still call. Yeah. Uh, in real life, Nip Visit is my favorite magic character. Oh, I so know nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. Sorry, John Snow. Oh, okay. Basically, um, he's the only creature in all of um. D and D, like a pre-done creature that can maintain uh, concentration on multiple spells at once. Which one? Uh, Nip Oh yeah, Nip Yeah, true. 
because there are technically two beings that can do that in um, in Ravnica. Yeah, it's Niv Mizzet and uh, Ral Zarek, I believe. Uh, no, it's um, the Guild Pack. Oh, Jace. That's not even a, that's not a creature though. Well, technically now it is. It's Jace. Yeah, Jace is technically a creature. Jace, Jace oh, is the Guild oh. Pack. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I've I've read a bit of the Guild Master's Guide to the Ravnica and and got that backstory, yeah, but, like, or that part of the story. I don't know too much about Jace. <laughs> Niv Mizet is the kind of dragon that you don't want to mess with, and he's not gonna mess with you. Niv Mizet like, is Cyrus's role model, although Cyrus doesn't know it. <laughs> Niv Niv Mizet's horde is Ravnica. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Anyways, we digress. Um, anyways, if there's anything I can do to help you out, uh, my job here is creating magic items, and I'm your magic item specialist. Still takes time and everything, and there's only really me because Lifter can't really do it, but I do get some help from from Firen and and Jorn, and uh, 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 sometimes even even Leon helps out. Uh, especially with the, those more of the holy ones. <laughs> um, would you be able to tell me why uh, my glaive is not uh, awakening or anything? Nope. You're shame. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I do have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you have any sort of idea on way of removing a sentient being from a magic item? Oh, yes. I'm going to say no on that, mainly because usually it's different for every item. Okay, well, would you like to take a stroll into my vault of incredibly dangerous items? <laughs> <laughs> At a later date, maybe. Well, I think that's a discussion to, to have with the, the higher-ups. That's uh, Sylvia and Leon. Leon's kind, of like, Leon's kind of like our connection to Io. Because he is also sometimes referred to as the avatar of Io. Ooh. So, yes. okay. So, out of character. Mm. I'm almost getting, like, parallel universe vibes from this. Mm. How so? I don't know. Because, like, there's one person that's, like, very similar to each of us. <laughs> yeah. And, and I don't know. I like it. It's, like, cool. It's, like, we're talking to ourselves from a different universe. <laughs> Low-key. Kind of. I don't know. It's neat. Not exactly. Yeah, I will tell you. Tell you this: the the blood hunter uh, uh, Ethan would have never even thought to have used Ruin's Wake. He would have been like <laughs> evil item. Uh, let, let's let's either see what we can do to destroy this, or lock it away. <laughs> but that was Jordan playing uh, Jordan and that. Uh... What? Hey, you know what? Every once in a while, it's fun to play as yourself in D and D. <laughs> Sometimes, um, I play D and D not to play myself. <laughs> yeah, uh, Krebus is definitely not me. <laughs> so I think um, Kriv would go to court and talk to his dilemma about his armor for what he sees happening in the future. About it being heavy. Uh, so going. Go oh. Hmm. Like I feel like he'd be the one that would be able to help. Uh. Out. Well. So you basically want to take an ancient artifact and convert it into a different type of armor. I can't probably do that. Not with this armor. I mean, I, I could probably do that with plenty of other armors, even magic armors. It just requires like, like, like break. I mean, really, all it would be is be basically making a new version of the thing. It's really hard to like convert anything without having it lose its enchantment. So you basically ended up, up like breaking it down. Like if I took some plate mail or plate armor and I wanted to make it make it into scale scale i would basically have to tear it apart and make it scale armor which is just basically using old resources to create a new item and then i would have to re-enchant it so outside of something like 
the blessing of Io or something like that, like a godly divine act. Probably wouldn't be able to do it. I mean, this is a Bahamut based uh, uh, armor and kind of like taps it. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, so who knows? Maybe Bahamut would be able to do something to do that. But <sighs> I'm trying to convince Bahamut to do something. It's pretty hard. And I mean, <sighs> maybe if you were something like one of his ancient dragons that, that he always has around him or something. Yeah. If only Cyrus would like to like he would like to like audibly snicker because he can't talk but he can make noises and he's gonna do like that. <laughs> so if only, did, if only like, you were we knew a one old dragon. We knew of one. Yeah, if what only we it? knew of one, right? I mean, they, they I, we did. You would have to ask them. I, I mean, and then getting to Bahamut usually can it kind of be be a pain because then you have to, you know, find a way to get to Mount Celestia. Then you have to climb up the mountain into the Platinum Palace, and then you have to, and then you have to get an audience. And you know what? He might just flick you out the way because you know he's a big, powerful dragon and everything. Yeah. Um. On a side note, let me question. I will tell you this, Io, such a better dragon god. He's he's not like this the, the arrogant asshole. Like, I'm gonna like oh shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I, I totally forgot. <laughs> Based off of iconography, I'm assuming you're a paladin, Bahamut. Sorry about that. It, it, just just personal it's okay. experience. It's, it's, it's okay. Uh, I understand what you say. I mean, it, we don't really have anything against him. It's just. I, There's I've a lot a of long, sign in dealing with him. I've had a long history with Bahamut. A very long history with Bahamut. I understand what you're saying. I'm sure you have, young one. Not as young as you. <laughs> he just shrugs. Yeah. Just... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Been around for a couple hundred years. <laughs> Whatever you say, Dragonborn lives a much shorter life than I do. I love it. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just, just I'm my... definitely young. Just the, just, just, just the Dragonborn. Nothing else has happened with me. Nothing. I'm going to yeah. ask if he has any new equipment that we might need in our travels well i haven't got any orders right now no unless there's something that you think you might need i mean where where are you going we'll go ahead and tell them where our two locations that we have all right so he's like oh i got it and uh he ducks behind his counter again, and you hear a bunch of rummaging around. And he uh, pops up uh, with a box, and he goes, Poof. And he opens it up. Nope, not in here. And he puts it down and goes behind this counter again and says, Oh, shit! And he pops back up and says, Lifter, up there! And he points, and the, uh, uh, the Warforge Walks over and he's like eight feet tall. He's a tall motherfucker. And, and he he goes up to the top and he he grabs a, a box, uh, which you would think that this is definitely a box that Court wouldn't really be able to carry because it's really kind of bulky. And would and it looks like, well, it doesn't look like it weighs much based off of uh, how Lifter picks it up. And Lifter c comes over and puts it on a, on, the, on the, the counter. He lifts it up and he pulls out these little er, pulls out these scales, which are about like this big. Like five or six inch, inches big. And he he puts like 
He looks around and has been like, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you only need six of these, right? Okay. And he pulls out these six silver scales. Or at least they look like scales. Uh, if you touch them, you touch them, they actually feel more like leather, but they're silver in appearance. And it says, here's, here's some cold weather scales. I know, not very imaginative name, but I got them from a silver drag. I got, got these based off of the silver dragon. And what they'll do is you, you could just like put it on your arm and it will basically make it so that uh, you basically have resistance to cold. And meaning weather wise, if you get like attacked by, but like a, like a, 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 a white or silver dragon and get, they breathe on you, it doesn't give you resistance for that, but it's like you're wearing more mullet, whether clothing, whatever clothing you're actually wearing. That sounds awesome. So it's, it, it's basically, what did I call them? Several scales of cold or I don't remember what I call them. But basically, if you you go, you don't have to worry about constitution checks when you're in cold weather. Oh, that's pretty fucking great. That's it. it, it that's all it does. <laughs> it, environmental, it, it, it basically makes you immune to uh, environmental cold. It won't necessarily do anything if you like go to desert. It won't like keep you cool, but... Uh, at least make sure that you don't get cold. Which is much it, better than nothing. If you're going into like really hot weather, like the deserts of like uh, the, the, uh, the Brazilian wake uh, waste and the Iodron where it's like really, really hot. Um, then uh, it's, then that's, that's a brass one. <laughs> I think you're muted, Cliff. Fixing microphone. Ah, Micro uh, what's happening? We're having trouble uh, hearing Kriv. Might have to switch back to your laptop mic. I connect. I don't even see any. Mm-hmm. I can. Not yeah, we you we can barely hear you. Oh, well, he fixes that. And, and now I need to, to create that magic item. <laughs> oh, actually, I'll do this for me. Hello. I think we're hearing Hello. you through your laptop. Are we good? No, Curve is still troubleshooting. Okay. You guys hear me now? Yeah. A little bit it, better, but still. still We're going to have to yell. It, it's just the thing. Every... Um, try upping your Discord sensitivity. Maybe that's going to help. Cold weather scale. It is an item 
Magic item type is wondrous item. Yeah, you might have to uh, just go ahead and uh, switch over to your laptop mic. There you go. So just to show you how, how quickly a uh, magic item can sometimes be made. Oh, that's not it. Hmm. Let me get you the right link. Here we are. So cold, the cold weather scale. Uh, the silver scale gives the wearer resistance to cold weather. <laughs> so everybody can add that to your inventory. Scale of cold weather. No, it's cold weather scale. Sorry. Yeah. You guys hear me? Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 This thing that's not working well. Oh. Anyways, what were you trying to say? What were you trying to say before? Griff? Oh, now we lost you again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, for I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, okay. Got distracted. Okay. Anyways, uh, anybody else needed have any other requests for court? <clears throat> I'm good. <laughs> because you did all that shopping <laughs> before <laughs> when if you had waited and got your patron, uh, you probably didn't know, need I, I, I do have something. Mm. I'm gonna ask him. I have this helmet. Unfortunately, I cannot use the teleport or teleport circle spell myself, so I cannot study the um, the circles. Do you know of a way that you could like change this helmet for me to study the circles? Because you know. Uh, what is you have someone the... in the party who literally can memorize these things. I know, but you know, you you'd have to use the the helm, and you already have three slots. Hold on a second. It, this is the helm of teleportation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Here he goes. Uh. Hold on. Let me look at this. And he pulls out this little loop and it looks here. And it flashes for a second. And, oh! 
This is a hell of teleport. It doesn't even use teleportation circles. And he tosses it back to you. But if I want to teleport to a teleportation circle, I need to know the teleportation circle, right? Well, I mean, you would just be like, hey, you know that place where there was a teleportation circle? That's where I want to go. Oh, thanks. I mean, you don't need, you, you don't have to have the teleportation circle memorized in order to go to a place that you know about. Sure. It just makes it easier. Teleport can sometimes get a little wonky. Teleportation circle, much more stable. The only thing is you have to memorize these things, but your wizard buzzy here can take care of that for you. Yeah. So, do you have one here? The teleportation circle? Yeah. No, so, we've only been here for a short time, so I haven't had time to create one. Okay, but I know where there's one, uh, Cyrus. Cyrus already knows about the one that's in in the downstairs in the basement of the Iron Bear. He was okay, there good. to memorize the sigil. Good. <laughs> I know because I rewatched last week's show. Woohoo! So, uh, anything else for court? Nope. I, I think that's you to uh, everybody. So, I'm good. Uh, as the beginning, as we, for us being your patrons. Uh, we will. We have the uh, Sylvia has been working closely with the locals. Uh, I believe the Havas for for mo most of the work. Uh, I'm, I'm doing Leon's voice like Leosin's, and that's not right. I'm looking at Leon, not Leosin. It's different. It's okay. Uh, but uh, he he basically says um, just to demonstrate how we can be, in addition to the gear and equipment that we can help provide and that Quark can assemble for you. He's been known to be very efficient in creating these things. Did you see how many bags he has there? He does that in his free time. Holding. What? He's trying a new headset. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. This is what we're going to have to do. Okay. From my phone. <laughs> yeah, as long as it works. It should be fine. Yeah. And um, so in addition to that, we can offer some additional boons. Uh, one of them, I believe that one of you cannot use some magic items because you cannot speak. And he looks at your little pseudo-dragon friend. He'd like to be very pretentious and be like, what are you talking about? I... Cyrus is self-conscious <laughs> that he can't speak. Yeah, you, you, You're telepathically communicating this and, and like, <laughs> maybe coming out of your mouth. And he he just leans forward to you and, and uh, clasps his holy symbol and touches your nose. Just a tap. He boops the snoot. Yeah. <laughs> he booped the snoot. Uh, just to give me Boop. one second. My mom's calling. Uh, That's all right. How dare she? So when Cyrus comes back, he will learn that he is now a pseudo dragon that can actually talk. <laughs> actually, there's a little bit more, but I'm waiting for him because that's more <laughs> exciting. Cat. So, uh, as you complete your missions, 
we will help you to improve in other ways that aren't necessarily equipment. We can provide you some additional boons that may help you on whatever path that you journey on. Is, is as, are there any things that that you may be interested in 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 future endeavors? Uh, Kurt will speak up. He's like, we thank you for all of this that you do for us. Um, I personally can say I know myself. I am ongoing, taking up a new path of barbarian. To help shore up our parties. So anything in the long lines to help with that would be great. Hmm. So you're being what uh, has been referred to as a Polarian. Yes. Well, I have an idea, but it will take some time for me to discern how to do it. Plus, I must entreat uh, the actual, technically our patron, um, Io. He may be able to help. They may be able to help. Any help is great, is thankful. The smallest thing to the big, and I appreciate. Anybody else have some have some thoughts of what they'd be interested in? No, I'm good. Okay. I would really love access to your libraries, especially when it comes to the Netherill. Honestly, we don't know much about the Netheril here. We're not even from from Toral. All the books that we actually brought here to populate this mansion um, are more of the general academics. Creatures, monsters, some some legends, but not much in regards to Toral. Oh, the Netheril okay. are... We're aware of them uh, since our, our few journeys to Toral, but that's about it. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. And with that, that is your introduction to your group patron. Court can help out making um, items, crafting items for you. You, uh, as as you level up, uh, you will you may get some boons. Awesome. Yes. Would there be a way to communicate with you while we are on our adventures? Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, Quart! Uh, the, the gnome comes out into the, to the general area and says, can you grab a sending stone? A few sending stones so they can, can communicate with us. Oh! Also, uh, a document C satchel. Uh, right away, sir. A document C satchels, yes. And uh, I'm back. And uh, Quark comes back and he hands you a sending stone. This is tuned directly to us. Uh, uh, we don't, it, it's to, to the mansion. It's kind of like. It'll alert us when you're trying to call, and then somebody will pick up. 
We uh, appreciate this. Also, this is a brilliant idea. Why, I don't know why I didn't think about this, but there, here is something else. Now, note, this is not a bag of holding. It looks a lot like a bag of holding, uh, but it's... Uh, but it's more of a document bag. Oh, yeah, um, I've heard of that. Uh, and he goes, this is actually connected to, to our storeroom. And, and there's a section where, where whatever you put in here will go to there. And then if you need something, you can reach in. Also, if we need to send you something or... Uh, well, we can either send you a message through here. You'll be able to tell. It gives kind of a hum of thing. And, or vice versa. There's this book. And he, one of the pouches has a little book. Just write in here and you can write a message and it'll just go to a book that's over here. Cool. You wouldn't happen to have a uh, occult and abacus by any chance. Uh, no, we don't have one of those. Sorry. I've heard of it. Don't have it. What is it? It's a kill counter. Oh, pfft. It's pretty nice. So, document C satchel. Uh, Cyrus, you want to take it or do I take it? Sure, I'll take it. Document C Satchel, you should easily be able to find in D&D Beyond. It was already created under the Acquisitions Incorporated book. Yes. I love those. <laughs> that's why it I is. Have, it's you know, a fancy it, satchel. I really like it. Yeah. That's why I like the Uncle to the Bacchus. <laughs> it's like, okay, Crib killed one. Cyrus killed three. The documents essential becomes a common item, allowing you to magically send and receive documents to and from head office through a special pouch. Your documents essential ma magically produces his handwritten and signature ready contracts at your request, covering most co common co contractual deeds. It also occasionally produces sticky notes printed with useful information, inspirational quotes from the head office. Um, let's see. So this is the satchel of, includes the satchel of holding feature. Additionally, you can use an action to draw forth from the the document to the satchel a spell scroll of comprehend languages. Scroll vanishes when used for ten minutes after or ten minutes after it appears. Um, this is slightly modified in the fact that, well, actually, no, because one of the satchel's pockets uh, functions as a bag of holding. So that bag of holding space is connected to a space here at the uh, at the sanctum of the eyes of Io. Do you want me to have that actually as just like our loot thing? The Guys. loot satchel. Yeah, like the group, uh, the group, the group loot satchel. Uh, but there's there's a different magic item for that. It's called the living loot satchel. No, I've been using my bag of holding as our loot thing, like where we uh, every time. Um, um, no, I I know what he's referring to. He's referring to another item. That's what's yeah, the... but. I mean, you could get a metal case with find engraved scroll, scroll work. Um, let's see, what does it? Do? What's the the benefits here? The bag of holding is available in a variety of color and styles. Even loot satchel is kind of magical, oh, being that that safeguards the the franchise's funds and valuables. Its innards is connected to a c secure coffer within the head office. Actually, this is what what I really wanted to give you was the living. Was living loot satchel. I figured, but you know. 
this one is uh the only thing i I think about this one is one of the like the last level but i don't think we're gonna go that way so well i'm not i'm doing this as you have this magic item not trying you for you to rank up a franchise uh it's not like you're a franchise of the eyes of io No, where to when, you, when you use your that thing you need feature, you can requisition any item of up to 200 gold pieces of value, yeah. as long as they would fit in the confines of the satchel's portable hole. Uh, yeah, so I, th- I actually think it's the living loot satchel is really what I wanted to give you, but uh, I'll, I'll give you both. One, so you can, you can send written communications and uh, uh, one for fun. Crave? Yeah. You uh, can no, have a living loot satchel. Okay. May I direct your attention to the portfolio keeper, which would be the sending stone wish one? What was it? Uh, portfolio keeper. Yeah, I'm not going to use that one. Okay. <laughs> it's ba- it's basically what Sister Frederica is already already doing. <laughs> given given the uh, <laughs> the none of your your of your uh, none of your business. Maybe this is stuff that you have in your franchise of your uh, your nuns, your different franchises with nuns. <laughs> yeah, because we give the we give cards. Contact us. Come contact none of your business. Okay, so back back to back to Cyrus. Uh, so so he he boops you on the nose. Mm-hmm. Those and you, you feel like tingling in your throat. <gasps> and he says, "Go ahead, try speaking." I mean, I, I know you like know words. An, I feel like that's an accurate noise, considering the fact that this is coming from a creature who's never had vocal cords before. <laughs> it might take he, some time. He, he thought speaking had took a lot more effort than it actually does. Which makes sense, because he's only ever had to speak via thinking, right? Yeah, and and if you try doing that, it still works. Awesome. So now, now you can speak, but also you're a little bit larger. Oh, you've kind of grown in size, and you're you're still you're kind of like that cusp between medium and small. Aw, yay! You you feel a little bit different, and there's something. You know when you cast Ray of Frost and you basically it's kind of like your version of Frost Breath? Yes. Yeah. Um, you kind of have that sensation of when the beam is is shooting out of your mouth, but it seems more like steamy. Like steamy? it's some sort of like like fog. And it, you just go, you like huff in this like burst of this burst of cold air comes out of your nose. <gasps> That's so cool. You now have a breath weapon. Oh my god! That's uh, amazing. Cold based, so constitution. It's the your it's basically a proficiency. It, it's your prof- It's basically just like a dragonborn. Uh uh, breath. The only thing is, it's a D four right now. That's amazing. It's a dragon breath cantrip. Yeah, it, it gets it gets powerful as you get. Um, it's 
It's one of those things where it recharges on a D6. Oh, cool. cool. Uh, Chris. I have no idea how to add that. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things where you kind of have to take note. Yeah. Oh, I think I'll have um, to edit. Or yeah, like maybe probably, make. But uh, you could probably make a custom uh, attack. Yes. Okay. Ability scores character. Here we go. Uh, and I would, I would say that would be a, it'd be a cone, uh, but I would say that's only a 10 foot cone. Okay. Okay. I'll do a custom attack. That makes the most sense. Yeah. A general uh, it, attack. And it does take an action. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so efficiency bonus plus constitution modifier plus eight is what mine is. Okay, so this is interesting. All right, I'll work on that. You guys keep going. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, Wind. Can so I you, 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 you've actually made a step in one of your goals. <laughs> it's it's small. A step nonetheless. It's a small step for for a human, but a huge step for for Cyrus. Yeah. Since he's small. And says, well, uh, Leon kind of looks down and he says, says well, I, I suppose since you haven't actually spoken before, uh, it's going to take some use get used to. But uh, needless to say, you are no longer a pseudo dragon. You are a dragon, <gasps> a small one, a very small one, but you are a dragon. Oh my god! You're not a pseudo dragon. You're a mini dragon. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> you're a fairy you're a mini fairy dragon. That's perfect. Okay. Um I'm going to give Cyrus the uh, decanter of endless water in. I don't make want it. Try, I gave it to you. Say, make him try to say geyser. It is <laughs> lands like no hold on to that. Let him get used to actually speaking before giving him a magic item to try to activate. Okay, repeat. After I get me. frustrated. Cyrus, repeat after me. Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Say it with me. I cast fireball. All the D6. Yay! Sorry, I'm giggling for no reason. I mean, every everything that you were able to do, uh, or and how you did it before, you can still do. It's just now you have to add the voice. You've got a mini breath weapon, uh, and uh, you're just a little bit larger. You got fat. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> no, it's it's not around the middle. It's just like general. <laughs> size <laughs> everything is still in the same proportions it's just a little <laughs> larger cyrus did you eat too much 
Oh my goodness. Not as soon okay. as I end your mini dragon. Okay. Now, okay. Now, what stinger. you can Do I lose my stinger. Nope. <laughs> It's, okay. it's still there. You, basically, your your same body and shape and everything. You're you're a different type of thing because you're silver. You ended up getting this a a, a frost breath, a cold breath, but everything else has pretty much stayed the same. It's not uh, because it's silver dragon that he's having a cold breath. It's because he has a he has a cold heart. <laughs> Again, I don't have a shade fan. <laughs> Let's stop throwing shade. Sorry, they're all missing. They're at my place. Okay. So a 10 feet cone dealing what? how much damage? Uh, 1d4. It, it's, it's very minor right now. Who knows? Maybe as you grow... It will it'll become more. Actually. Uh, Kriv. What's your, what's, your, what's your breath weapon at right now? Uh, mine does uh, 30 foot uh, range. He's a 30 foot line. Yeah, you're, you're somewhere it's, about. Mine's the, a 3d6. 3d6? Okay, you do 3d4. Yeah. Nice. And you're giving so you two extra DC. dice, but it's a D4 instead of a D6. And it's only right. a 10-foot cone. 10-foot cone dealing 3D4 damage. Save DC is 8 plus con plus proficiency? Yep. Okay. So, Kriv, I'm going to ask you to make sure that when your die levels up on mm -hmm. your breath weapon, that you remind uh, Cyrus that his die levels up. It's it, still a D4, it but it will be the number of die. It won't happen again until 11th level. So... So basically, if you look at the Dragonborn, just it's pretty much the same thing, just a D4 and D of D6. And yours is different in the fact that it recharges on a six on a D6. So at the start, yes. after after using it at the start of your turn, roll a D6. If you get a six, it recharges. All right, now let's see if it added it to my character. No, because this is the Bears and Dragons version of the Greater Cedar Dragon. So we need to edit character, and I need to change his race. Uh, or you can just add a cu custom attack. I tried that, but it wouldn't let me edit it. If you If you click on the custom action... Oh, oh, that makes it, sense. It will then give you the edit. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's it wasn't straightforward. I had to remember that. So that is your first boon is uh, instead of having a, uh, a uh, pseudo dragon wizard, you now have a mini dragon wizard. We appreciate that. I'm not sure if I should be scared or not. A little bit. So it's 3d4 range stat is con. Damage type is cold. Oh. And the save type is dex. Con. No, the save for that. Con. One. It's constitution. It's con? Okay. Yeah. For, yeah. for cold, it is constitution. Fire, lightning is dex. Cold is con. Poison is uh, uh, constitution, I think, too. Missing something. Acid. 
acid acid is dex Oh, come on. So while you're working on that. Yes. Uh, and Leon welcomes you to go on your way. Provide you with the appropriate equipment that you need and you have your choice of quests. Which quests are you planning on going to? Uh, I think we should head uh, to back to the Iron Bear Tavern because I uh, Kriv has things to talk to the group, and we can decide from there. All right. Plus, I need to say goodbyes. All right. So you you guys are easily able to head to the Iron Bear to sit down and uh, Krebus. Uh, Krebus uh, uh, says that uh, if you need any information about uh, one of your missions that they had some people stop by um, to uh, let you know who your contacts would be for each of those. Um, then uh, I will go ahead and tell them you want to hand them all the handout about the dragon horn. But that upon them saying the word dragon horn, it sparked a memory in of mine, and I remember this. What it actually is. Did you, did you all get that? Yep, I heard him. Yep. Yeah. Hey, I flashed up the what the uh, Dracorn uh, does, actually. I can do this, too. Oh. I also put it in Discord. We're we're looking for the 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 track on the track horn. Well, no, um, Kriv heard it earlier, like before the council meet, like during our days of respite, and all. And then upon the council meeting, someone mentioned it, like the the thing we heard was a dragon horn. Not much was known about it, okay. but it sparked a memory in Kriv's mind. And I, and so when we're back another back at the Iron Bear Tavern, I'm telling you, everyone what it is okay and the fact that they're trying to con like guessing for us like we wouldn't know that it's trying to call the dragons to there but we know it we know it's trying to get the attention of the chromatic and that in itself is not a great thing and you, your contact for the uh the Sea of Movie Nice uh, thing uh, is Dallas Sil Silmerhelv. Just call her Dalla. They know that the the so Sea of Movie the same one from the the meeting. Yeah. So okay. so this is so this is the information that Kriv knows about it.
Okay, sorry, I'm just playing with it and seeing how it works. Yeah. Funny yeah. enough, my first breath weapon was a crit. <laughs> well, it, it it wouldn't be a crit because it's a save. <laughs> I know, I'm just trying to figure out how it works. But, but, but yeah, it would have essentially crit. crit. <laughs> okay, so... I feel like it's not doesn't have an attack type. That... It does say cold. Yes. It's a DC 14 con save. I'm just trying to remove the, um... The roll. There we go! Woohoo! We got it! I'm wondering why I added the plus one. Because it's, it's showing roll in 3d4 plus one. I don't know... So it's Dala for Tiefling Quest. Yep. See a movie nice with the last known location of the Drakhorn. No one can pinpoint its present location from the sound or even verify with certainty that the relic is still in the Northern Sea, but the search must start there. The one person who could tell us more is a Tiefling sorcerer named Macath the Crimson. No one alive knows more about the Drakhorn than her. Uh, but the Arcane Brotherhood, of which she is also a member, uh, hasn't seen her for three years. She was investigating the Sea of Bowie Nice when she disappeared. No information about what she was investigating? Well, she was trying to... Uh, she was investigating the Sea of Bowie Nice in regards to the Drakhorn. Okay, gotcha. Because that was the last known location. So that's that quest. We lost Grave. All right, there we go. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I like nothing was coming through. And Leosin is actually your contact in regards to the uh, Verum the White uh, one because it's the Harpers have been uh, kind of monitoring his whereabouts and stuff. So that's your your. Two quest options. Two quests. What does everyone think we should do? The horn doesn't strike as me as a dangerous uh, item. Might be I'd well, to, I'd have to disagree. With what it what it signifies is dangerous. Is that the cult that that someone's trying to rouse the dra the chromatic dread? Yeah. Um, again, uh, I would go for uh, our other objectives before that. Something, uh, something within Kriv, like within me, says that for me, the Dragon Horn is more important. To to be fair, Being the 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 quest is to find Macath. Yeah, someone who knows more on the dragon horn instead of the dragon. Horn. No, we're not finding the dragon. We're finding a tiefling sorcerer who has been stet who knows more about it. So that just resonates with me more important. Dragons converging on somewhere and getting a little bit uh, agitated probably would not be a good thing. Yet again, 
if all the chromatic dragons are at the same place, a bombardment there of magic would probably get rid of most of them. But we also, again, we don't know the whole thing what it says about the dragon horn. We just know that it's trying to rouse the chromatic. Yeah. Rouse the dragon. That's all we know. We don't know what exactly it's trying to do. And the fact that it's trying to rouse the dragon in and itself is not a good thing. Plus, even if we do get all the chromatic dragons together, who's going to deliver all that magic uh, nuclear bomb? Not us. So, I say we talk to Dahlia. That's where I put my, my vote. Second it. I agree. All right, let's go. Good. You can do chapter two before you do chapter three. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, you could do a mini order. That's fine. It, but, it's... all right. So, um, you meet up with Dala, and um, she provides you some from more information. Um, McCass quoted her progress to the host tower, uh, the host tower, excuse me, by way of sending spells. Her last report spoke of uh, seeing ice hunters paddling their sea skin, seal skin boats toward a huge iceberg flattened like a plateau across its surface, but ringing ringed by icy peaks. She had intended to follow the ice hunters and investigate the iceberg. After that, no more reports came. Attempts to find Macath using scrying and other magical means located only her ship adrift and heavily damaged. Some of the ship's crew were seen dead, but no sign of the tiefling sorcerer was ever found. However, the lair of a dragon as powerful as Arathor Arthator is no doubt protected by scrying magic. Uh, if Macath is alive, in addition to the lore, lore she can share regarding the Dracon, the Arcane Brotherhood would be most grateful to get her back. Uh, so she uh, lets you know about um, the Old White Death, a white dragon uh, who haunts the Sea of Moving Ice. Um, and uh, possibly somehow related. Possibly. Intriguing. I say we should gather provisions and in the morning head out. Um, uh, some additional equipment that uh, can be uh, provided for you would be some snowshoes. Because it's going uh, to be in the north, eh? Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, you, you'll probably need that. The um, cold weather scales will help so that you don't necessarily have to wear different get cold weather gear, per se. You would be pretty safe, but uh, also if you're going to be in the water... Uh, that doesn't necessarily help with that because it's not necessarily cold weather. So Makes up sense. to you on that. But, you know, appropriate gear can be helpful. Obviously, Cyrus doesn't need any of that. <laughs> you, you wouldn't have happened to find uh, an artifact in your journey. Maybe the Ring of Winter. Uh, nope. Let's hope they don't have it. Doesn't mean they don't have it. Just means they didn't find it. No, I see. I said, let's hope they don't have it. Oh, like, I heard. So they don't have it. I'm like, no, that's, that's not an either or. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Okay. Um, they do uh, get you passage onto a ship that's built for flying the waters of the Sea of Moving Ice, uh, Frost Skimmer. Uh, it's captained by a human male known as 
I love the way they give me very difficult names to 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 say. Yeah, that's uh, nice. Captain Half Face. It, it wouldn't be D and D like a pre-done D and D campaign if they didn't give you ridiculous names. Larusta, uh, Half Face. So you could probably just call him Captain Half Face. Right half of his face was left scarred. Uh, was left a uh, scarred ruin, uh, which he'll tell you is from sphere frostbite suffered years ago. He keeps a leather leather hood drawn across his face most of the time, both for warmth and so as not to frighten children. What a kind and considerate fellow. Let's see, uh, the Frost Skimmer is a light long ship with a uh, shallow uh, draft uh, driven by a single sail or by oars when necessary. Combination of wind and ore power is needed for picking a course through the close packed ice. Despite the ship's length of nearly 60 feet, it is still light enough to be lifted by its 40, 40 crew members uh, if it becomes hemmed by ice. The ship is open to the air, but the crew rig sailcloth shelters across the, the deck to keep away the wind and sleet and hold in some warmth. How long will our journey be? That's a good question. Uh, it will definitely take several days to, to get up there. Can I backtrack and... Um... Yeah, sure. Buy that that uh, rig of water walking, just in case. <laughs> yeah, sure. I think it said there was one twenty-five. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Actually, one twenty-five gold piece. Mm -hmm. Is there? Is there others? Sure. I'm gonna take one. All right. Anybody else? I don't need uh, them. Now, now that knowing that we're going like going there. Uh, Kriv will grab one too as one of his provisions. I, I just want to say, I just want to say, a ring of water walking lets you walk on any liquid, not yeah, only that water. Yeah, that includes magma. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it, the thing about magma is, it doesn't mean you don't take damage from the magma from walking on it. It just means you can walk on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just to be clear. Yeah. It's uh, not a ring of fire protection. Right. Yeah, now, but if you had can... a ring of fire protection or what for ring of water walking, the only thing is the ring of fire protection provides you resistance, so you're still taking damage. The, but I mean just half. The only thing that it changes is that if you rain if you if you walk fast enough, you can just walk on it. If you're a monk, you can just walk on it. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're Cyrus, you could just fly over top of it. Yeah, Cyrus is fine. Uh, All right, Go so on. we're going to head out in the morning? Yeah. Okay. Um, before evening coitus, I'm going to spend some time working on short swords. Okay. Uh, no, I'm just trying to find guys. Do you know how pity my boyfriend is? He Very? needs to go. Yeah, he needs to go like uh, de snow the car, like mm -hmm. shovel the top of the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's just on the on the sofa not wanting to move so I have to throw water at him to be like shoo shoo like he's a cat <laughs> boyfriend's the worst <laughs> in all the good ways can't live with him that's I can't live with him that's the problem it's, it's like a 
It's like I say, women can't live with them. <laughs> That's another. Yeah. So, do it. Okay, so you, so you're able to make the sea of moving ice in a few days. No big deal. The thing is, how long does it take to get where you need to go in here? You know what? We're almost to closing time. I'm going to just, just call this as a great stopping point so I can better yes. prepare. Yes, that's <laughs> acceptable. I really enjoyed the session today. Yes. Yeah, because now we have mini Dragon Cyrus instead of pseudo Dragon Cyrus. Yeah. I knew yes. I wanted to give you the boonded talk, and then I decided, eh, let's go a little farther. That's Not awesome. Much just to give you, give you being able to talk. So I can imagine that during during the trip and this entire time, Cyrus is pra- practicing talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> just... Sticking to yeah. sticking to common first. Elvish gets really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's like I can think these words in my head, no problem. <laughs> but but when I, I try to speak tongue muscles to say them, <laughs> pronunciation is weird. Melop. All right, I love you all, guys. All right. All right. Folks. See you Thursday. Great session, yeah. guys. Thanks, Win. Uh, Thursday, oh. uh, seven central. I think I said. Yeah. Seven central. Seven central. That's eight Eastern and uh, five Pacific. And six Mountain Time. Thank yes. you. That's me. <laughs> yep. Okay. No. Right. So for me, so it's, it's for me. It's eight, right? Right. If you you're the equivalent of the U.S. Eastern Time Zone, yes, eight yeah. o'clock. Good. Yeah. Cool. I know right. some of Canada gets further out, so it's like three hours ahead of me instead of just one, or two hours ahead of me instead of just one. So. Yeah, but I'm the bad, the the bad, the good side of the, like I'm I'm really close to USA. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, you, you and me are eight o'clock. So it's yeah. it's eight seven six five or yeah eight seven six five yeah. Because six mountain uh, time, and then sometimes it might be pushed to like nine mountain time if I'm working on Wednesday. Okay, so you're in the mountain time zone. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm at only an hour ahead of you. Like yeah. Right now, right now I have it as two forty nine. Yeah, I'm and it's hours, I'm two hours ahead of Cyrus. Okay. So so at least we're relatively compact. We're within, within three mm-hmm. or yeah, two hours. It's difference. not. It's not awful. Could be yeah. worse. <laughs> yeah. All right. Love you all. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Okay.